It was awesome. And I was a little bit more like, I don't know how I feel about the runway, uh, 5K on the runway to Tampa International yeah. Airport. Because they put it to the side. So yeah. you're not like on the main runways, which makes sense because that'd be insane to throw people out there during flights at, you know, 6, yeah. 7, 8 a.m. But once we started going, you're close enough that as the planes take off, like you can't feel them, but you feel that. That the reverberation. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. So that was really cool. And again, the weather, fantastic. Both races really well put together. The running with the Rays, Jay. I did it last year. Was their inaugural one? Just over 700 people. This year, 1,500. Wow. They doubled their That's number. huge. It's because they heard that you were going to be there. Yeah. It's exactly the well, reason they saw, why. They saw how well I did last year, and they're like, we gotta, we got to slow this guy we down. We could do that. <laughs> uh, so double there. And uh, listen. The Rays have themselves a pretty good weekend in Colorado, or did they? Uh, <laughs> your thoughts on the Tampa Bay Rays right here. And listen, I think out of the three shows here on WDAE, I think you and I have been the most pessimistic. Can By we agree far. on that? By, well, well, we agree on that? We're taking veiled shots. We don't have to agree. It. We're taking veiled shots. Go ahead, say it. Are we taking veiled shots from the other shows? We're getting veiled We're shots. We're getting, that's we what I'm saying. We haven't taken any shots. We've been very uh, kind to our, 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 our cohorts. We, don't, we know that. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's been pretty wild listening to both the morning show and the afternoon show just boo, 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 at us for, and again, I look, I will go, you, you made a great point last week. You picked this team to win more games than anybody last year. Yeah. I have not, I would, I would argue I've been the, as much of a super fan as anybody at DAE ever. For the race. For the race. Exactly. Like I, I am, I bleed race baseball. I, I point to a picture back in high school I took where we couldn't find a fourth friend and we painted our chest and I had to be the Y and the S because we literally went to the game and it was an empty crowd and we're raised and I was the Y and the S. Like, I fully love this team. I want this team to do well. I, I have fought tooth and nail with the haters, the doubters for, for as long as I can remember, as long as I've been a baseball fan. That being said, I don't have a good vibe about this season. And so far at five and five, yeah, you can argue, well, they're 500. They're banged up. I know. <laughs> Keep your excuses. Are you watching these games? Yeah, I think that's the difference is people could say, oh, well, you have faith in them. You have faith in them like you have faith in the Lightning. It's not the same team. Look at how different, and we say how different the Lightning are from the two Stanley Cup champion teams, but they still have the same goalie. They still have the same top three offensive player. They still have the same top defenseman. So the core is, in essence, the same. Oh, trust in the Rays. Things are going to be the same. Look at the 2020 World Series team and look at this team. Look at how different they are. Look at the pitching staffs. Different. This is different. Now, listen, we'll give credit where credit is due. One, two of three in Colorado. That first game, we'll get to that. No, start, let's start with the let's, positive. Let's go Can we, Let's start with the positive. I want to start with the positive. You want to get him out of the way. <laughs> I, I want to start with the positive. No, I don't want to get out of the way. But I just, Listen. I want to start with the positive, and that's Ryan Pepio. I think that was the high, the biggest highlight of the entire weekend. Six innings pitch, three hits, 11 Ks. He was fantastic. One thing that we learned from Doug Wechter when we had him on late last weekend was what? You have to go at these hitters at elevation because the spin's different. you got to go after them with the fastball. That's exactly what we saw from Ryan Pepio. He was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really like what he's about. He may have, when you're talking about even when – Guys are healthy. I mean, he may have one of the, like, you're talking top stuff. I mean, he might be up there with some of the best of them in this rotation. And that includes guys like Rasmus and Springs. I don't know if he's got McClanahan type stuff, but hey, second or third, that's not too damn bad. I, I'm with you. And, and he's definitely the brightest spot, I think, over the last three days when it comes to Rays baseball. It's ironic, and I know we'll get to the Friday action, but I had uh, somebody on social media I was going back and forth with a Rays fan. You I'm were? Good in bed. I, I wouldn't say I was arguing. I, I wouldn't say I was arguing, but they were upset at. It, they were in the camp of like, the raise injuries and trades and lack of spending and all the other excuses are finally catching up to them, which we've heard a lot of this year. Okay, is that all these things that people have basically used to poo-poo the raise for the last three years have finally caught up to them? I don't subscribe to that personally. And one of the things they pointed out was how bad of a return the team got on the Tyler Glass now trade. And I said, a. This team wins more trades than I can count in terms right. of what it loses. So let's pause there. They don't win every trade. They're not perfect. Eric Neander is human. But they do very well in that cycle. And in that exact trade with Tyler Glass now, one of the guys they got back was Ryan Pepio. At that point, he hadn't pitched yet. Right. But I can tell you this. A lot of the people that were poking their heads up to be like, they shouldn't have traded away Glass now. Didn't have a damn thing to say after Peps exactly. bounced back like a damn stud. He looked amazing in that start. Out of all the guys remaining in this rotation that aren't hurt, you could say he's right there with Eflin. 
I think when you're talking about top-notch stuff, and this is the conversation that we had. Remember when we had the talk about a month ago and I told you about Taj Bradley, about his kind of ceiling? Mm. Ryan Pepio's in that same conversation. Like, listen, Zach Eflin's good. Don't get me wrong. He's steady. He throws a ton of pitches. When, but when you're just talking about pure talent, guys like Ryan Pepio are not uh, – they just guys like that just don't grow on trees. Like those guys right. are special. They have God given talent. There's something that is in their right arm that makes them a whole hell of a lot different than you and me. And Ryan Pepio is a key reason why the Braves were. Listen, I know there was you know financially driven motives as far sure. as the trade of Glass now and Marco, but you want to get something back. And when you look at the way he threw the baseball in Colorado, you go, oh okay. That guy is not just, oh, wow, he's got great hair. Oh, wow, he is a highly touted prospect coming from the Dodgers. Like, the dude can pitch. The guy's legit. And I think out of everything this weekend, love the I love the heart, love the comeback. We knew that the race had that. But you want to talk about something maybe we didn't know? And I think you and I both were high on Pepio. For sure. But, man, I don't know if we thought that he would be 11 Ks in six innings goods this early on in the season. No, I, I would agree with that. Even my wildest expectations for him and what he could be were exceeded in that start. And look, for him, it's going to be about whether or not he can be consistent, as it is with all pitchers, especially ones that look to be top of rotation guys versus a four or five on different teams every few years. So I, I like the stuff. It was good to see it. And I go back to his first start, which I know he walked a lot of guys. He got banged around in the first inning. But I felt like watch, again, this is why it's different between people that watch the game and are just looking at the box score and being like, well, the Rouge did this. Pepio got banged around in that first, round, uh, first inning of his first game. He wasn't that far off the strike zone. He was far enough off that they were clear balls. But I was looking at it, and I was like, if he just tweaked a little bit. And it was his first start. Again, this is a, a younger pitcher, and Snyder is a genius in the lab. And we saw the fruits of the labor immediately in Colorado. He was by far uh, the best part of what the Rays did this weekend. We want to hear from you. 888-546-4620. That's the toll-free number. Your biggest takeaway, whether it's positive or negative from the Rays weekend in Colorado against the Rockies, 82945 on the Bartow 4 DAE text line. Start that text with uh, DAE followed by your thoughts. And we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Go check us out over there. You need to make sure you know how to get us and reach us over there because we're going to give away some tickets like that here in the next couple of weeks. There's a text on the text line from the 630. Struggling to take two out of three from the Rockies is not a good indicator. I love the team. I'm hopeful things can get better, but I'm a realist. Bad lineup can't hit. Our guy Dolan says Ray's going to be up and down all year. Some fun games and some shameful games. I think that's kind of the roller coaster season that we have ahead of us is some ups, some downs. I want to get to some more of the good stuff, though. Um 14 stolen bases, first in the AL, fourth in the MLB, led by Jose Siri. And I really got to show Jose some love because he has taken the mantle from Kevin Kiermeyer as the heartbeat of this team. <laughs> that dude don't care. You saw Trisha Whitaker and Doug, uh, they go went all the way up in the stadium Terrifying, in Colorado. by the way. I don't know if I would have done yeah, that. Yeah, I'm out. And then Jose's like, I want to go up there too. <laughs> I this guy, I, I really have, he's really grown on me. And you kind of understand his limitations. He's going to strike out a little bit, but he's going to give you everything he has in every contest. Two players have played all 10 games this year, Yandy Diaz and Jose Siri. And I just, I love what he brings. I love his energy. I love his passion. Uh, the Rays are lucky to have a guy like that manning center field. This has got a Willie Adamas vibe to him. He's the he first does. player out of the dugout after guys hit home runs, by the way, too. He's the first guy to be mm -hmm. up and hugging them and celebrating them. And he's bringing the energy. El Electrico, right? Like, he is that. And he's getting on base because if you don't, you can't steal. So we're seeing the fruits of the labor there, too. And he gives him some flexibility at the bottom of the lineup. Mm -hmm. We saw him. We like him at nine to kind of lead into Diaz on the second time through the rotation or the lineup, um, but you're seeing a move, seven, eight, nine, where they can put him in a few different spots because as much as he does, you know, he is a strikeout guy, he's also getting on base, and he is fast as hell. I mean, he's stealing second and third a lot of these he's times. Wild. So he, he has been a very bright spot, um, and credit to him who, who's been able to step in. I know some people have issues because he does hot dog it a little bit in the outfield at times in terms of, you know, how he catches the ball and the way that he approaches it, uh, but... Uh, I don't think that that precludes his defensive ability. Yeah, I don't think it's taking anything away from him. If he if he's coming up right. short on balls and he's making a bunch of bonehead plays, uh, sometimes he just you're you're easing your way to the ball. You're catching the ball in the middle. I mean, Kermeyer had an element of that too as well. So I, I wouldn't make too much of it. You mentioned Ben Rorf, Ben Rortvet, catcher one by the way. 
You can say it. They've both played six games, right, so yep. far, Pinto and Rortved. Uh, 15 at-bats for Pinto, 16 for Rortved, three hits for Rene, six hits for Ben. You got Pinto with a 200 average, an on-base of 250, Rortved of an average of 375, on-base of 474. So Ben Rortved, the guy that came late to the party, Seems to be the guy that is outperforming the dude that we were told all off season long that he was going to be the starter. So we'll see. But I like what I've seen from Rortved. That weird hit that he had when he went down to a leg. I don't care. It doesn't have to be pretty. But it just <laughs> it really it flies in the face of everything we heard all off season that we should trust the Rays that Renee Pinto's the guy and all these articles that were written by Topkin and the crew in the Tampa Bay Times. Not that they were wrong. That's I what mean, they were being told. They were being told That's just like being us. Told, they were like being us. told that Renee Pinto was going to be a guy playing what 120 games this year. They were we were led to believe that he was going to be the starter in the freaking All Star game. That's the kind of high hopes they have for Renee Pinto. Now he's getting out at batted from a guy that wasn't even on the team until the week before the season started. Ben Rortvet is catcher one. He is. Lock it in, C1? folks. He is C1. C1. And that is not as much as it is a, a boost to what he's done, although, again, he's been balling at the plate. That was a Hail Mary swing that he had on one knee, but it worked. And that's what happens when you have a shorter guy who's yacked and jacked and ready to freaking swing the bat. I, he reminds I, his name's Rort Vet. He reminds me of Jorts. I'm calling him Rorts Jorts because I don't know what the hell goes on when guys wear Jorts, but they always have a good time. They're there to party. That's what I feel like when I see Ben Rort Vet at the plate. He's ready. He's ready to party. He's going. Jort. I don't know what it means, but Ben Jort Vet Rort Vet. He's doing something on this team. He's catcher one, Jay. Don't get it twisted. And again, maybe that works out. Maybe it continues. I don't have anything bad to say him at this moment. He's already exceeded my expectations. But it is a hell of a bad look, I think, on a guy like Rene Pinto, who everybody told us was going to be the bulk guy. I think best case scenario for Pinto, the way things are going, he splits time with Ben the rest of the year. When I think of Jorts, I think of one person. Who that? John Cena. <laughs> my guy. Ba, ba, da, ba. Great to see John Cena last night at WrestleMania. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Okay. <clears throat> so glad that the Rays were able to win Saturday and Sunday because what happened Friday was just an absolute atrocity. To lose that game to the Colorado Rockies in the way that they did. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit some facts on you real quick. The Rays have an ERA of 524, third worst in the American League, fifth worst in Major League Baseball, and this is a team that predicates themselves and prides themselves on pitching. 15 home runs given up, second most in the AL third most in Major League Baseball. Okay, they've had their struggles. We know the bullpen has not been as good as advertised. How long for Tyler Alexander? Not too much longer. Right? Uh, however long is not too, too long. much longer. I, I, um, but it was these comments on Friday night, Zach. And listen, I'm watching the game. I was working USF Baseball this weekend. I, I, I was keeping track of the game. I watched it when I got home. And I saw Pete Fairbanks... He, he couldn't find the strike zone with a compass. And I'm wondering, is he going to speak after the game? Because he is a very fiery dude, and he doesn't shy away from the camera. But I got to be honest, Zach. I did not think that this was the approach he was going to take. Yeah, they're horrible. We marked that down all caps for me. Horrible. Uh, no excuse, though. Didn't throw strikes. And that's what happens when you don't throw strikes. You get punished for it. So I'd love to see those come out of the humidor tomorrow in a little better shape before they get rubbed up. But, uh, you know, that's nobody to blame but myself for not being able to adjust to some of the, the quality issues. Dry or, or not smooth? Or what was the uh, issue? There was uh, just overall bad. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate further than that. They were not uniform from ball to ball. So there's no... I mean, dry, smooth, whatever you want to say. Just non-uniform, didn't feel right. So just make it tough for you to grip and kind of get the ball where you want it to go? Uh, yeah, it's tough to throw your slider when the ball goes that way out of your hand. So. I think just obviously the situation, having seen the team come back and, and score as many runs as they did, I assume that adds to the frustration of not being able to close that out. Uh, anytime that you don't close it out, it's frustrating. I don't think that it's, um, there's not a different level of frustrating if you do it. You know, one of the game you've led the whole time or a game you've come back, they're all pretty frustrating. Was that the first time that you've encountered a, an experience like that with the balls? Uh, I mean, anywhere in your career? I mean, they, they are never the same. This was just a different, different than what we're used to. I was used to, so... 
Ray's closer, even though they're not going to ever name him the closer, uh, Pete Fairbanks, on the condition of the baseballs Friday night. You want a piece of this before I go? Or you, you, you look like you want a piece of this cake before I go ahead. I just want to say on the front end. Okay. I've been a big fan of Pete Fairbanks. Still am. I still am a big fan of Pete Fair- Fairbanks. That was the most Bush League BS crap I've ever heard in terms of taking accountability post game for a game that you blew. And the one aspect that Pete left out there is guess what? The Rockies were throwing the same freaking balls. And the Rays, who couldn't hit the ball to save their life for eight innings, came to life in the ninth. You don't think it benefited them who scored, what, four or five runs to take the lead in the ninth? It works both ways, Pete. So even if you're being truthful, and even if that's accurate, which I'm going to raise my hand and say, nah, I don't think that's a good enough excuse. But even if it is, guess what? The Rockies can make the same excuse for why they gave up all the runs a half an inning earlier. I was very disappointed because that's not how leaders approach it, and it's a backhanded way to say, yeah, I'm taking accountability. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. You blame the balls emphatically. And I'll be honest, Jay, I don't know enough about the humidor and how the balls can come out, if it can make that big of a difference, but I know that both teams were using the same balls. And I know that sometimes I get a bad cigar out of a humidor, but I don't bitch about it. I throw the cigar away, I move forward, and I have another cigar later in life. That's how you should treat baseballs, Pete. Dugas, I want you to play the beginning of that again for me, please. If you can. John. Yeah, they're horrible. You mark that down, all caps for me. Horrible. Uh, no excuse, though. Didn't throw strikes, and that's what happens when you're not All right, stop. You- stop. Per my last email. <laughs> no offense, but. Pete. Peter. Can I call you Peter? Listen, dude. You are blessed and privileged to be a Major League Baseball player, and you were a closer for the Tampa Bay Rays. You're one of the leaders of this team. You're one of the leaders of this bullpen. And for you... To start your little media session there with put it in all caps, let everybody know that it was the baseballs, and then the very next sentence say you're not making excuses is a bold-faced lie, Pete. You can't do that. You can't act like, oh, I'm taking accountability. When you started it off saying put it in all caps, you're the one that emphasized it. Let me emphasize something for you, Peter. Zach Littell threw five innings, five hits, one run, zero walks, five Ks. You're telling me they changed the baseballs for you? What about the baseballs that Zach Littell was throwing? This is the type of stuff that I just don't understand. Bro, stand up there. I didn't do my best. It is what it is. Nobody else was complaining about the baseballs. Nobody else. I didn't hear Jason Adam, who gave up the game-winning ding-dong, complain about the baseballs. I didn't hear Wagaspak, who has a 12 VRA, complain about the baseballs. I didn't hear Colin Poche, who blew the save and gave up three hits and three runs, who's got an ERA over 15, complaining about the baseballs. What makes you so special? I know. Put it right there. Put it in caps. It was the baseballs. They weren't right. No, Pete, you weren't right, my guy. I think he's an uh, uh, awesome pitcher, a like a really stand-up dude. But this was not your finest moment, not even close. You can't do things like this, man. If you're going to go in and go into the media and say, hey, put this in bold letters, we will. We're going to put it in bold letters, but not anything about the baseballs, about your comments and your actions. Because that's that just, it's just not right, Pete. It's not right. That's not what leaders do. Leaders are accountable. Leaders take responsibility when they mess up. They don't mess. They don't blame it on their tools. You're out there. You're a craftsman. You think that you're one of the best relievers in all of baseball. You act like it and you, you stare down, you know, opposition and you're not afraid to go in the middle of a fracas when things go crazy. You want to bow up. You're part of the stables uh, of guys that throw 98. You can't bitch and moan when the baseballs aren't up to your standards. You got to make it happen. You got to fix it. You're a professional baseball player. Do something about it. Don't go to the media and tell Mark Topkin and Adam Berry to put it in bold letters that the baseballs were screwed up. You got to be better, man. There's no excuse for things like that. Yeah, I know a lot of people brought up the uh, Raynaud situation, too, because he does have the issue with his hands in the cold weather. It was in the mid-70s that day. 
So the, the weather, although it was a lot colder the next day and in, into the weekend, uh, was certainly not an issue for one Pete Fairbanks there. And I think it's ironic because he is the closer. He is their best reliever. The bullpen in general, which you and I have been very critical of, basically since the season started a week and a half ago, did not look any better this weekend in Colorado. They tried to blow the game in the uh, third of the series. They definitely, in point right there, did not do well in the first game, which they did blow. Pete and uh, Jason Adam, who came in, obviously it was a tough situation, but he didn't get out of it. He gave up a grand slam after getting one out. The, the the bullpen it doesn't the issues don't start or stop at Pete Fairbanks. It's the entire bullpen, my man, and that's part of the thing that makes me really concerned about this team moving forward. Again, we don't want to quote unquote overreact, but the bullpen has not been good. They, they, to say they've been inconsistent is putting it lightly. They didn't look good this weekend. The the team is fortunate they came out of that series winning it two to one, their first series win of the year, mind you. I I, I have no faith in this bullpen. Some of the guys will start to look a little bit better. We'll see some more consistency, but overall, I don't know who they're throwing out there thinking, yeah, this guy's for sure going to close the game. I can't point to one pitcher right now. I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. And it, it's, you know, I think you and I had, we started this, like, putting our show together. They've won two of three. They're five and five. You feel better going into tonight's game against the Angels? Honestly. The Angels, who also have five wins under their belt. Uh, no. I, I don't. I, I don't walk away from the series and call. I look at the series in Colorado and say they could just as easily be one and two, zero oh and three in that series. They are lucky they were even able to come back in the first game, and they're lucky without the stud outing from Ryan Pepio. They're probably not winning this series. And the heroic comebacks of the offense. Yeah, which mind you, the offense did have hits and they did have the comebacks, but the bats were also cold early through most of those games. It was you know it was nippy out there. Uh, at least they're better than the Marlins. They're one and nine. Yeah, you got a vague shot there, but <laughs> All right, when we come back on the other side, March Madness, there's so much to talk about. The Caitlin Clark versus South Carolina. I'm kidding. Iowa against South Carolina. Caitlin Clark, Dawn Staley, the final four. We're going to break down and look ahead to the national championship in the 2 o'clock hour, but we'll look back at the final four and also uh, how the women's season wound up as well when we return. But first, Jay and Zach, for the Golden Diamond Source, the Golden Diamond Source has the largest collection of fine jewelry under one roof. And when it comes to April birthstone jewelry, Diamond takes center stage. The Golden Diamond Source's Diamond Days program gives you 15% off April's birthstone jewelry this year. Marks the Golden Diamond Source's 40th anniversary as your jewelry destination and the only deal with natural diamonds. It takes billions of years to form natural diamonds. You don't want something that was made in a factory just two weeks ago. And for those first-time diamond buyers, they've got the Golden Diamond Source first-time buyer program where they'll educate you about the four C's and all the different shapes and styles. And that's just the beginning of all the fun and the good stuff they do over at the Golden Diamond Source. Always love to remind y'all that the best part of what they do, though, is that their diamonds never lose their value, which means you can go in later on. It can be a short time after. It can be years later. And trade up for a bigger, better diamond. Spring clean your jewelry. You're spring cleaning your house. Why not do your jewelry, too? Find out how much your Golden Diamonds are worth today at the Golden Diamond Source, where they'll maintain it and ensure your jewelry as well. They can professionally clean it, check the settings, make any necessary repairs to keep your jewelry in top condition. And I'm telling you right now, great way to get brownie points with your spouse. If you're going to buy a diamond, you got to do what we do here on Jay and Zach. Make sure it's a Golden Diamond Source diamond. The Golden Diamond Source 300 Ultra Road in Clearwater. Always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. Today, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner. Home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the Los Angeles Angels. Coverage starts at 8.30 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. Westbound on I-4 slows from 22nd Street to 275. Have a crash westbound on Gunn Highway at Four Oaks Road or Nixon Road. There was an accident eastbound on Fletcher at 275. A disabled vehicle in the right lane southbound on US-27 at I-4. And a minor crash on the Pinellas Bayway near Landmark Circle. See traffic problems? Call the traffic tip line at 866-545-9595. From the Traffic Center, I'm Daisy Ash. This report is sponsored by Taco Bell. Taco Bell's new cravings value menu is a big deal. Or rather, it's 10 big deals. From new items like the loaded nachos to familiar favorites like the spicy potato soft taco. Check it out at a participating Taco Bell today. Available for a limited time only while supplies last. eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. 
With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. There are products that offer up to a 20% upfront bonus just for opening an account and up to 12% per year for retirement income. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and I've heard from other advisors saying this is too good to be true. No, it's not. We are one of the few who can offer products like these because we're independent. We're not registered with a broker dealer who tells us what we have to sell, and we don't have to answer to a board of directors who prioritize shareholders over clients. So, is an upfront bonus up to 20% and 12% per year growth for income too good to be true? For most advisors, yes, but not Trajan Wealth. The fact that many of our clients come from other financial advisors is a testament to our value. Experience the Trajan Wealth difference for yourself. 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Annuity guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. DBA in Florida as Trajan Wealth Insurance Solutions. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she just launched her new side gig. A true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Hey guys, t Kraz here. For my friends over at Pool Perfection, Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder, the summer months are coming. Are you ready? Dive into the summer with Pool Perfection. They can build your pool in weeks, not months. They're Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder. Tons of five-star Google reviews. And check out their beautiful new website, poolperfection.com. See their beautiful work for yourself. So if you're in the market for a new pool or a pool remodel, call my guys over at Pool Perfection, 727-518-POOL, 727-518. 518-7665. Tell them t Crash sent you. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants and stuff. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. Here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Hey guys, Jay Retro here on behalf of my friends at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. If you're looking for a place in downtown Tampa with a scratch kitchen, craft cocktails, expanded wine menu, and located just a few blocks from Amelie Arena, then Top Shelf Sports Lounge is the place for you. You gotta try their grill wings and Ebor egg rolls, fan favorites, and they've got healthy options too, like sushi grade ahi tuna, the tuna bowl, and their power play salad. For more information, head on over to topshelfsportslounge.com. Everybody keeps asking, where can I go to get a drink or a bite to eat in downtown Tampa? My answer, always, Top Shelf Sports Lounge. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. The Five Star Review. It's as important to contractors as it is to customers. Service Titan can help you earn more stars with innovative software features designed to give your customers the most convenient, most modern experience possible. Take it from the guys at Rainforest Plumbing and Air. Service Titan has enabled us to give each service call that personal touch. We love it because we know who our customers are when they call us, and we even know if they have a favorite technician. Start earning more Five Star Reviews. Schedule a demo today at servicetitan.com. That's servicetitan.com. I had an important job, and it wasn't just a job. It was keeping my brothers and sisters safe. And coming back, it felt like kind of thrown away. If it hadn't been for Wounded Warrior Project, I honestly don't know if I would be here. It was like I got my family back again. We all felt the connection, like that brother and sisterhood. 
See how Wounded Warrior Project empowers women veterans like Donna by visiting woundedwarriorproject.org slash empowerwomenvets. Climbing ladders to clean your gutters stinks. For only $1 per foot, let the gutter experts at the Rhino clean your clogged gutters before they cause damage to your home. That's right, just a buck a foot. You enjoy your game day while they do the dirty work. Go to therhino.com and schedule your cleaning today. Your home sold in 14 days. Guaranteed at DuncanDuo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. It's Freddie Prinze Jr. and Jeff Dye back in the ring for an all-new season of the Wrestling with Freddie podcast. That's right, Freddie. Get ready as we highlight the most jaw-dropping matches, dissect the fiercest feuds, and uncover the latest twists and turns in the world of pro wrestling. And we obviously can't wait to hear from you, the Federation. Without you guys... None of this is possible. Listen to Wrestling with Freddie on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. There's a lot to be proud of, but, you know, there's going to be tears. It is sad that this is all over, and this is the last time I'm going to put on an Iowa jersey. So um, I think just reflecting back and soaking in everything that I was able to do because basically anybody other than me and Coach Bluter never thought this was possible. That is Iowa superstar Caitlin Clark speaking after her team loses for the second straight year in the national championship game to South Carolina, who went wire to wire undefeated to become the champions Wow! of women's college. Insane, man. You're listening to Jay and Zach. I'm Zach Blobner. He's Jay Retcher. As we hit the hardwood here to talk a little bit about basketball, uh, not just what went down in that game, the final on the women's side, but the final four on the men's side. We got the other championship game tonight between the two Titans, UConn and Purdue. We'll look ahead more in the two o'clock hour, but looking back, Jay, especially for the national championship game, and I credit Don Staley a lot for in her post game speech and, and at the podium for showing love to Caitlin Clark and how much she has not only uplifted this tournament, but her sport in, in women's athletics in general. It's going to be hard. We know the impact was great, but it's going to be hard to completely see that impact. Because I think we're going to be seeing it for the next few generations. What Caitlin Clark not did only in that game, not only in this season, but in her college career. Yeah, I mean, one thing that really bothered me over the last week and a half was why was that there were so many women that are around basketball trying to tear Caitlin Clark down. I I did not understand that Diana Taurasi, who I think is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. On the women's side, she's saying like, oh, it's going to be a rude awakening when she gets to the WNBA. Like, why? Like, why can't she come in there and have some modicum of success? You did. You came out of UConn, one of the most historic programs and, and, and one of the best careers that we're ever going to see. You're one of the GOATs. So is Caitlin Clark. Dawn Staley said as much. We're going to get that audio up here in a second. Why? Why? I don't understand how this last week and a half turned into a lot of the biggest voices in, in women's college basketball taking shots at Clayton Clark. Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to tear somebody down to elevate other people? I thought Dawn Staley was all class. She was the person that stood tall amongst everybody. And here, and you just alluded to it there, here's what she had to say standing on the podium after her South Carolina Gamecocks finished their undefeated season 38-0. Thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. She carried a heavy load for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to lift that league up as well. So, so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. That we appreciate you. To take time out of the celebration for her team when they weren't the main storyline, she could have went up there. And this is kind of what, what gets me so perturbed about what we just heard from Pete Fairbanks. Dawn Staley had an opportunity to stand on that podium right there, Zach, and say all of the narrative around the country was about one girl, one young lady who took the world by storm. But we proved that it was about team and and we were the kind of the forgotten 
Storyline. Listen, you and I went over the storylines on Friday. South Carolina was far down the list behind Iowa and UConn and everything going on with the med, and they were undefeated. But she had that opportunity to do so, and she didn't do it. What did she do? She took the high road, and she celebrated one of the greatest women's college basketball players of all time. And I've said this for years. I know people sometimes, they get frustrated. Why do I always have to bite my tongue? Why do I always have to take the tire, uh, the high road? You know why? Because you can. Because you can. You have the opportunity to do so. And that's what Dawn Staley did, and that's why she is etching her name into one of the greatest coaches in women's college basketball history with what she's been able to do there at South Carolina. Yeah, and you mentioned Sarasi taking some shots. I, I thought it was even more interesting to see a, another star in Angel Reese who won the title last year and just got beat, took to Twitter to kind of like – talk smack about the game and, and kind of say it was either rigged or that the officials were heavily leaning like towards Iowa. She didn't flat out say anything, but her tweet was clear that the game was being called in a way that benefited Caitlin Clark and Iowa. And I just thought it was really odd. Like to your point, there's enough people that are being ignorant and taking shots at the women's game and Caitlin Clark and, and just everything in general as is people within the sport. Like that's the last thing you should be doing. So credit to South Carolina. I heard a great line on uh, Gojo with Mike Golick and Mike Golick mm -hmm. Jr. today how basically like it's so easy from the outside looking in to look at this squad in South Carolina and be like it's amazing. But you see the raw emotion from Don Staley postgame and you realize just how hard it actually is despite them being undefeated, despite how deep that bench was. Their bench outscored Iowa 37-0. to Yeah. Nuts. They were the best team. Caitlin Clark was the best player, but it's one person. In South Carolina, it was just too much. I enjoyed the game. You know what I noticed most about not only that game, but the Final Four, the women's Final Four, and the women's game in general? It created FOMO in a way I've never seen before with the women's game. People around town in this weekend, I was at a couple 5Ks, I was at a couple other places, everybody wanted to talk about it. You can tell a lot of people I was having conversations with weren't exactly aware of like the scores or what was going mm -hmm. on, but they didn't want to be left out and chatter. Right. And, and that's so amazing. I can't wait to see uh, what's next, not only again for the college game, but how the WNBA is able to maybe evolve with not only Caitlin Clark, but Angel Reese and some other stars coming. We'll see. We'll see because we just, we haven't seen that translation from college or even like Olympic style uh, women's sports to the pro side on really any sports. Yeah. Like we get jacked up about women's hockey when it's Olympic time, women's soccer, but all right, everybody knows Abby Morgan, right, right. for soccer. Everybody knows Megan Rapino and Carly L Lloyd over the last couple of years and some of the big time Julie Ertz. Right. But nobody could tell you who their pro team is. Right? Like, think about that. No, I agree. Right? Even like you said, it'll be interesting. This is as good of a chance as they've had. Exactly. I mean, you look at some of the best stars in the WNBA over the last couple of years. You may know the names, but did you know what can team Candace Parker, was, uh, Candace Parker was on? What team was she after on originally? Tennessee. Right? Yeah. What team was she on after that? Did you know what team she got drafted on? Did you know she was at L.A.? Did you know she went to Chicago? Right? So, like, people yeah. don't know that. So that's where the education process has to come in. And hopefully for the WNBA's sake, Angel Reese and, and somebody like Caitlin Clark, and they can help lift that brand up and, and Paige Beckers eventually. But it's going to be tough. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awfully steep mountain to climb, and it's a much steeper one than college athletics because you have that built-in fan base of you're a college fan of maybe a different sport. Like right. Iowa football fans can be like, that's our girl, right? And that's, yeah. that's just the way it goes. It's a built-in fan base. Uh, the big key for me was the uh, Iowa re out rebound. They were out rebounded fifty one to twenty nine. Uh, they couldn't handle South Carolina under the glass, but that was huge. But also, you mentioned the men's Final Four and UConn over Bama eighty six seventy two, Purdue over NC State sixty three fifty. That big matchup will break down in the two o'clock hour. But real quick, I want to show some love to Alabama. It's one of my one of my favorite teams to watch all year long. Mark Sears. Uh, Jalen Brunson 2.0, as I like to call him, played all 40 minutes, 24 points. And how about Grant Nelson, 19 and 15? But, Zach, you're going against UConn. All five starters in double figures. Each guy had at least three rebounds. Four of the five had five rebounds. Like, that's a complete team effort. UConn, so impressive. But you got to give your uh, tip your hat to a team like Alabama. We'll see what the future holds for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, despite flight travels, UConn just dominated. They've done it all tournament. They've done it for two years. Uh, Danny Hurley has that squad in a place where we rarely see teams, um, let alone in back-to-back -back seasons. So uh, they just continue to take care of business. Nate Oates has done a great job with that Alabama program. They are now officially a basketball school after <laughs> Nick Saban's retired. So uh, the Tide are a lot of fun, man. They can score in a lot of ways, and 
I don't think as long as, you know, Oates is the head coach there, they're, they're going to go away quietly into the night any season. So he's really built up a great thing as long as he stays in Tuscaloosa. But we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get later. to that a little bit <laughs> later on. Uh, and then Purdue 63, NC State 50. Not really much from DJ Burns in that game. They kept Only trying to make points. it seem like Burns and Edie were like the, the clash of the Titans, but they weren't even on each other most nah, of the game. It was, it was kind of funky how that whole thing right? shook out. And I thought NC State, the way they defended Edie was kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, I we've agree. seen him take over 10 free throws pretty much a ton of times in the last two months. He was only two for two from the line. 20 points, 12 boards, four assists, two blocks. It was just kind of a funky... G- Shout out to Ben Middlebrooks, though. I thought he played his ass off. All postseason long, this guy has been the unsung hero for the Wolfpack. I think he's related you know. to Danny Cannell, right? It's his nephew. Yeah. It's his nephew. There you go. <laughs> you couldn't tell by the million social posts that Cannell's put up the last three weeks? I didn't know the exact affiliation if it was a cousin yeah, it, or a nephew. It's his nephew. 26 minutes on the hardwood Two points, seven rebounds, three assists, a steal, and three personal fouls. Personal fouls. He did his thing. I know we're going to break down the game in the two o'clock hour, but here's the key, the key stat for both of those games. Alabama turned the ball over eight times in the loss. NC State turned the ball over eleven times in the loss. UConn in their win turned the ball over four times. That's crazy. That's crazy. Purdue. Bama doesn't play defense, though. To be fair. I, okay. Purdue turned the ball over 16 times in that game to NC State. I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's going to be a close game, and we'll give you our predictions a little bit later on. But if Purdue turns the ball over 16 times against UConn, they're going to get run out of the gym tonight. Among a few other aspects, like you said, we'll talk about it later, but I think if Purdue puts the game that they just had against NC State against UConn, they're going to get destroyed. Uh, shout out to the NC State. They did have opportunities. They just they couldn't knock down shots. Every time they got within six, every time they got close, they would find an opportunity. I thought defensively they played pretty stout, and you just kind of went over some of the numbers from the Boilermakers side. Um, but they just, they could not take advantage. The magic ran out. They seemed like a tired team. And, and think about what they did, right? They ran through the ACC tournament, won their way in, ran through the tournament to get to the Final Four. It just felt like the car ran out of gas. Uh, but hell of a season, hell of a run, really fun to watch them. And Burns was one of the stars of the tournament. Matt Painter, I know a lot of people around the college basketball world, happy for him, very well liked. It's going to be a clash of the Titans, but to your point, Jay, Purdue has to play better than they did against NC State, or it will be a blowout. What wasn't a blowout was the Lightning in Pittsburgh over the weekend. They might not have got the win, but I, for one, walked away feeling good still about this team. Tampa Bay, what's the latest when it comes to the Lightning? We'll take a look at what they did in Pittsburgh and what's next down the stretch here in the regular season. Next here on Jay and Zach. Though the day-to-day grind, the meetings, the pressures, the constant stop and start on the bridge. Ever just catch yourself saying, I gotta get away? Well, here's your chance, big guy. It's Goons Goons Getaway at Tropicana Tropicana Field. Tune in all week to the Pat and Aaron Show for your shot at winning tickets to the Rays and Angels. And escape the noise of the day-to-day with the Goon Squad. Presented by your Tampa Bay Rays and the Goons on 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Streaming live on Alexa and the a free iHeartRadio app. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized inflation adjusted and tax advantage retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench. So call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit askthehollands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. At International Diamond Center, you can take your time and design and meticulously create the most unique, most exquisite ring imaginable. But if that's not your thing, we understand. 
And that's why we created the IDC Signature Collection. Ready-to-wear rings at every price point. It's a complete ring that's already done. We pick out the small diamonds, and we pick out the center diamond, and it's assembled, and it gets our stamp of approval. IDC owner, Keith LeClaire. People like this because of the value that they're receiving because they're getting a complete ring without having to piece it together themselves. Even if your budget is $1,000, IDC has a ring you can take with you today with a quality, stylish setting and a GIA certified diamond. We did all the hard work for you. Listen, we're the experts. And our job is to pick the right diamond for the right setting at the right price point. And I think we do a pretty good job of it. Discover the No Stress IDC Signature Collection. Buy it today. Propose with it tonight. International Diamond Center, Tampa, Clearwater, Lakeland, and Sarasota. And online at shopidc.com. You wouldn't know it, but most financial advisors are put in a box. I'm Jeff Jr. from Trajan Wealth, and I want to provide you a little insight about financial advisors. Most financial advisors have to sell what their company requires them to sell, and many advisors have to only adhere to what's called a suitability standard. A suitability standard is a limited standard of care, not requiring what's sold to be best, just suitable. Advisors with this loose standard often have limited investment and product selection. Trajan Wealth is held to a fiduciary standard, which is the highest standard of care in the advisory business. And that's just one of the many reasons we have billions of dollars under our care and attract clients from other advisors. Raise your standards today and call Trajan Wealth. Call 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Men suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE, frustrated taking pills that don't work, Here's a message from Prestige Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prestige Men's Medical Center now. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. The iHeartMedia team is growing, and we're looking for experienced salespeople to join our team. If you're interested in working in a fast-paced environment and representing the biggest brands in media, go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa. iHeartMedia is an equal opportunity employer, and you may be the next rock star seller for our team. Go to iHeartMediaCareers.com and type Tampa and apply today. Bosch Tools is the proud sponsor of the 7th Inning Stretch during every Rays radio broadcast. Engineered for efficiency, comfort, and ease, Bosch Tools are built to keep workers feeling productive and off the injured list. Bosch Tools, what hard workers deserve. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, the home for Team Tampa Bay over, over 20, 20 years, years and counting. counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back, Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. And some good news today. I know a lot of people were hitting us up. Mikhail Sergachev was back on the ice for the Lightning today. It is picture day at Emily Arena. Uh, so, um, what a everything, tease. And, and I know that there was, a, there was a text here at the bottom saying, oh, from Mike in Tampa. I'm sure that means he's got a few weeks till he's game ready, but who knows? Maybe he could be back for the second round. Modern medicine as well. That's the hell of a possible comeback. I doubt that we'll see Mikhail Sergachev this year. Everything that I've been hearing from the team, uh, they're just so happy that he's around. He's happy that he's they're happy that he's out there with them today. But man, skating is one thing. Skating like at full speed and then also taking contact and going through all the rigors like it's that takes a while, man. And it's it's going to be a couple months for that. So I. I no Maybe if they make the final, but it's still, that's really, really a long shot. I just want defensemen that take out opponents and not linemen and referees and officials on the ice. What a scary scene at the end of that game, Jay. When, uh, was it Hayden Flurry that kind of collided yeah, with the ref? And the re I mean, I, it was terrible. I assume the worst watching it because the dude was down and like it. It was bad, bad. I had family up in Pittsburgh that said it looked even worse in person. Like the place went silent and. Uh, since we've seen that the NHL, I believe, PA put out or, or the uh, officiating branch of the PA, obviously, basically said that he he's expected to make a full recovery and all as well. That was a scary scene, man. Anytime an official goes down like that. You never want to see that, man. Crazy. So that was uh, aside from the actual game that 
Felt like it was going to be a blowout, and maybe the Bolts were taking a step back. Pittsburgh trying hard to make the postseason the right in the mix there at the end of that wild card spot. Uh, but the Lightning battled. They battled back. They almost stole, almost stole a win up in Pennsylvania. Yeah, they did. And listen, they found out that they made the playoffs, and you could tell there was a little. And Stammer said something to that effect too, of like, "All right, you know, we were kind of." It, it's tough to simulate that urgency of we have to win, that desperation. Pittsburgh has that desperation. They're trying to make the playoffs. And there was a little bit of a, all right, we'll just like kind of play it cool. We're not going to get too high. We're just going to play our game. And they were not up to the level of Pittsburgh. Down 4-1 after two. But, Zach, the Lightning are able to come back, and they're able to tie the game. Michael Bunting scores the game winner. But, yeah, I was really impressed. And for all those people, where are all those people out there that said Steven Stamkos was done? Huh? Where are those people? We should trade the captain. Trade Steven Stamkos. He's got 36 goals this year. He's probably going to get to 40. So for all those people out there that said the Lightning were done, for all those people out there that said Steven Stamkos were done, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Nobody wants to play the Bolts going into the playoffs. And it's time you put respect on the captain's name. Yeah, all right. He's not 25 anymore. He's not going to score 60 goals anymore. He's got 36. He's probably going to finish with at least 40. You're telling me the Lightning can't use that? Stamkos in his office is something that I hope stays for a long time, Zach. I hope it doesn't go anywhere because that dude can still fire a puck into the net regardless of what he does off the ice. We know the contributions there. But, Zach, this dude's scoring goals still. He hasn't fallen off. Just like we said, Mike Evans hasn't fallen off. Neither has Steven Stamkos. So all those people that are talking smack about the captain, well, you don't really hear him right now. But a couple of months ago, you were very loud. When you were jumping off the lightning and jumping off the stammer bandwagon. Yeah, I I hope that based on the way he's played, not just this entire season, but the last couple months, um, I, I think there's plenty there. From even if you take the emotion out of it, which we understand like there's a business to hockey, there's a business to sports, Jay, but put all that aside, he's productive. He's a good enough player. There's no reason to not have him on this team. And that doesn't include the intangibles. That doesn't include the impact he's made and the community leader that he is off the ice. All that stuff, quote-unquote bonus, to me it is a no-brainer. There is zero reason why Steven Samkos shouldn't end his career in a lightning sweater, shouldn't be back next season. And look, if they have success, whether it's in the postseason or as we're watching right now in the regular season, it's always in some way, shape, or form going to point back to Samkos in some capacity. I'm with you, buddy. All right, when we come back on the other side, speaking of lightning hockey, Dave Miskin, the voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning, is going to join us in studio, and we'll talk about the new book that he has coming out called Blind Squirrel and what he thinks of Stephen Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, and this Tampa Bay Lightning squad. But first, let me tell you about my friends over at the Rhino. They were just in here a couple of weeks ago, and they were telling me all about their 13-point inspection system and everything that they do to make sure your gutters are up to snuff. Listen, you don't want to be out there on a Saturday and a Sunday as the weather's getting nicer. You want to be able to go out with your family and do your thing and not have to worry about what's going on with your house. They have a free home inspection. Just go to the rhino.com. They have all the information on there. Just tell them Jay Retro sent you. Trust me, the Rhino is the place to go for all of their information. Just look it up, the rhino.com. The most complete rundown on all things baseball across Tampa Bay and around the majors. It's the Inside Pitch with Ronnie Lane. Swing and a drive, deep to left, go! Presented by the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network and the Department of Children and Families. 60 minutes before every weekday race game. Right here on the radio home of every race game in 2024. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. The home of the Rays. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. No major delays on the interstates or bay bridges, just typical heavy traffic in Tampa on westbound I-4 from the Salmon Connector to the junction with I-275. Tampa accident on eastbound Fletcher at I-275 and another one on westbound Gunn Highway near Nixon Road has injuries. Be on the lookout. Pinellas County accident, 70th Avenue North at US-19. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by Try the new limited edition orange dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. 
Try the new orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. It's like walking down recent memory lane. To have orange Dreamsicle Frosty in our timeline is truly something special. And we shouldn't let the moment pass us by. And be quick, it's only available for a limited time. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson here with Jeff Jr., owner of Trajan Wealth, talking about 401ks. And I've always heard that 401ks were great, but you're telling me something different here, Jeff. Well, 401ks are great when you're employed there. However, if you're no longer employed, you probably don't want to keep that 401k with your old employer, and you probably don't want to roll that old 401k into your new employer's plan. Really? Now, now why is that? Well, most 401ks have limited investment options and can cost you thousands of dollars more in fees. And that's true even if you roll it over into your new employer's 401k. You also lose a lot of control by leaving your 401k with your old employer. If the company sells or merges, they often freeze it. That is great insight, Jeff. And if you have a 401k with an old employer, stop what you're doing and call Trajan Wealth, 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor, paid advertisement. As America's largest injury firm, we have advantages few others do. Our results and reputation are well-known to the other side and we have a track record of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and winning big but what does that mean for you what does that mean for your case i'm john morgan of morgan and morgan one of the things we're most proud about is that we set up our firm so that your case gets lots of attention from a lot of people our technology and army of lawyers give us insight and oversight into every detail and every moment of your case paralegals legal assistants investigators buildings with boxes of evidence every resource carefully designed to get you the most possible. And at Morgan & Morgan, we even have a dedicated team to make sure that your calls are returned that very same day. Injured, dial pound law. That's pound 529. All firms are not the same. The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Ah, uh, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audibel Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audibel Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Are you tired of battling your weight without seeing results? Do you want to lose 20 pounds in just 40 days? Then look no further than Age Rejuvenation. They've been crowned Central Florida's top weight loss program. Their unique approach combines advanced weight loss treatments such as semaglutide or terzepatide with personalized metabolic assessments to optimize your hormone and thyroid function, boosting your natural metabolism for sustainable long-term results. Don't wait any longer. Visit agerjuvenation.com and mention Pat to claim your first treatment absolutely free. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's MarkSpain.com and start packing. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. Hey guys, T. Kraz here from my guys over at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades. It's called regenerative medicine, guys. So if you're tired of those achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love doing, you got to call my guys over at QC Kinetics. I did. They fixed my elbow. They fixed my knee. They could do the same for you. 
No surgery, no steroids, no drugs. They are a thing of the past. Regenerative medicine is where it's at, and they can deliver lasting results. They can use your own body's biologics to restore and repair damaged joint tissue, and that's what QC Kinetics will do. So get your life back, guys. Call them. QC Kinetics. Get a free consultation. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you going again with no downtime. 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. QC Kinetics. Locations in Bradenton, Lakeland, St. Pete, and Brandon. Tell me your boy T-Crass sent you. This March, it's time to join the winning team for your home loan needs with HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Right now, homeowners' debt is madness with credit card rates through the roof. Experience the slam dunk of a deal with your home loans by getting started at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Lower LLC and MLS 1124061. Equal housing opportunity. Terms and conditions apply. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Today, we're the largest injury firm in the world, and I'm thankful to you for trusting us all these years. We'll always be here for the people, not the powerful. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Have you downloaded the free iHeartRadio app yet? Just think you could take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all on one app. Free never, never sounded, sounded so, so good. good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. The reigning, defending, and undisputed home of Tampa Bay Sports Talk for over 20 years. We are 95.3 FM W237CW Pendellas Park. 95.7 HD3 WBTP Clearwater. 96.7 FM W224B Brent. And the, and the mighty, mighty 620, 620 WDAE St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, hey, hey Tampa, Tampa Bay. Bay. Free has never sounded so good. Welcome back into Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher. We are joined in studio by the one, the only voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Dave Mishkin. He is here with us, not just to talk about Bolts, but his new book, Blind Squirrel. Dave, what's up, brother? How you doing? I got to say, these are some swanky new digs. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jay so picked funny. out a lot of the furniture. Fun <laughs> fact. I did. I did. It was it's pretty... all lost on radio. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> you got that right, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, how are you, man? I mean, it's been a pretty entertaining season. And, uh, yeah, it's just just a kind of a, another step in the in the journey for you, isn't it? Well, like, I've been very blessed to get to do something I love to do. We're talking about broadcasting yeah, hockey yeah. <laughs> in, in, in this instance. And we've chatted about this over the years, Jay. Definitely. That, you know, if you can find someone to pay you to do the thing that you love to do, that's more than half the battle, right? So I've been blessed to be able to, to call games, whether it was at the major league level or the minor league level. I did minor league games for 11 years. Loved every minute of it. The grind of the minor league Broadcaster schedule though is a little bit more intense. Yeah, I mean it's different. It's a different kind of grind, mm-hmm. but you're wearing a lot of hats in the minors. And so when I got to the Lightning in 2002, I, I got to put away some of those hats and and focus on maybe two or three things and mm-hmm. and try and do those things extremely well. The most important, of course, was broadcasting <laughs> the games. So whether the team finishes first or last, I. I try and remind myself that I'm very lucky to be able to do something that I love to do. Having said that, yes, I'm very glad the Lightning <laughs> made the playoffs again <laughs> this year, seven straight years now, and it seems wow. like they're trending in the right direction at the most important time of the year. And and I would ask you too, because we've talked a lot over the years on air here, I feel like because you're so close to the team throughout the seasons, you mentioned some of the lows and some of the highs, it gives you a level of patience that fans probably don't have, which is probably beneficial in the booth, I would assume. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I think the benefit of experience, too, helps. But look, I mean, we try and be fair on our broadcasts. And I'm saying we, whether I'm working with Phil or or Brian Engblom did the game mm-hmm. with me on Saturday because it was a national TV game. And we we try and be fair and honest. And when the team is not playing very well, we tell you about it. And that's not fun, <laughs> 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 understanding that. Uh I have always tried to look at the journey, the regular season, as 
I've said this quite a bit, you know, you want 12 points every 10 games. Mm -hmm. If you can get 12 points every 10 games or average 12 points every 10 games, you're on path to make the playoffs. So one bad loss or maybe a tough stretch where you're still in range of, of maintaining your playoff pace is not reason for the alarm bells to go off. Start falling way off that pace, though, which the Lightning really haven't been in that boat for, for a number of years, then that's cause for concern. And and we try and be fair and honest about that, too. But fortunately, like, you look at the Lightning's year this year, they were inconsistent, and, and they were not really in a comfortable playoff spot. But at no point did they go into a major tailspin mm-hmm. where, you know, they lost eight in a row in regulation. Right. Like Detroit. Detroit entered leap year day. It was February 29th. They'd won six in a row. Then they lost seven in a row in regulation <laughs> and eight of nine in regulation, and they fell like an anchor. Yep. Those will really hurt you. Yeah. And the Lightning, were, as much as they were kind of by hook or by crook in mm-hmm. the first maybe two-thirds of the season, as they got their game in gear, they were able to cobble together points even when maybe they weren't playing as well as they wanted to. And that that's a big key to try and yeah. survive the regular season and then get into the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, as we know, it's a whole different ball game. We're chatting with our guy, the voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Dave Mishkin, and we're going to talk about his book, The Novel Blind Squirrel. Uh, you told me all about this months ago, so yes. I can't wait to <laughs> get my hands on it. But, I, you know, a lot of people look at the trade deadline and say, oh, yeah, it's just Dumba and Duclair. That's the reason why everything's turned around. But I, I know it's deeper than that. I know it's more than that. What? Yes, they're acquisitions, but what else about this team in the last month, month and a half has kind of corrected itself so that they are playing some of their best hockey at the end of the season? Well, the final defensive numbers are not going to be as great as they probably would have liked at the start of the mm-hmm. year, particularly Jay coming off an offseason in which they specifically <laughs> talked about right. limiting scoring chances against. But let's be honest, like... They went out to Western Canada in December. I remember seeing their stats. They were like 30th out of 32 teams Oof. defensively. And, yeah, maybe you can outscore your problems in a game or two, but it's going to be very hard, particularly right. as the season starts progressing, to be able to score four to five every night to win. They needed to get their goals against down. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's hard to bring in one player and affect that change. So I, I think you're right. I think Dumba and Duclair gave the team a jolt, a boost in a positive way, on the ice, off the ice. They allowed guys to slot into to positions where they could succeed. Duclair himself has played in a top six role and done very well. Dumba slotted in as one of the top six defensemen and is been able to eat up lots of minutes. I mean, most nights he's playing anywhere from like 18 to 21, 22 minutes a game, and and that's really helped the Lightning. And they've given them good minutes. So the trade deadline acquisitions helped, and they helped specifically in this push to get the goals against down. But good defense is team-wide. So I think it took everyone pulling on the rope. And the other part of the equation, I think Vasilevsky... To say that missing six and a half months, he'd just be able to like water off a duck's back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm back. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm good. It was going to take him some time. Mm-hmm. And I think it has taken him some time, but I think he's playing his best hockey of the year within this last stretch. Can you tell? And that has coincided with the Lightning's goals against coming down, but also the Lightning made it easier yeah. on their goaltenders because they are defending better in front of the goaltenders. Can you tell when Vassie's different? Like, because I, I feel like in the last month, I mean, Zach and I spoke yeah. about this yeah. last week. There's just something about him. He tracks the puck better. That's he it. He moves the puck better. Like he'll he'll glove a puck down, and he just seems more confident. He owns the crease. You can tell, right? Yeah. So like peak Vasilevsky, he's making all the saves you expect him to make, and then he's throwing in the ten bellers. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And earlier in the year, he wasn't able to throw in as many ten bellers, and there were some pucks going in that you're like, yeah. I'm a little surprised that went in the net. That look, Latang's goal the other day in Pittsburgh dribbled through him. It might have hit something on the way in. Those have been extremely rare <laughs> right. over the last batch of games. We want to say a month, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. Uh, what you talked about, Jay, though, tracking the puck. Uh, he's finding pucks really well, and I don't know if that's like a a game situation problem. And what I mean by that is, like, if you're a forward or a defenseman and you miss six and a half months. 
They talk about coming back and getting your timing back, right? Mm-hmm. Like fueling the puck, making a play at the right time. Well, the goalie's job is different. The goalie's yeah. job is stop the puck, right? Mm-hmm. Like how much does timing come into it? But there may be other parts of your game that suffer by missing time, right? right? And maybe tracking pucks is one of those things, getting the feel for in-game. That's hard to replicate in practice. It really is. And I have noticed him finding pucks really well and his quick reaction saves. Like he's throwing in those oh wowers Mm -hmm. now too, which is really important for the Lightning. They needed him to be that guy heading into the playoffs, and it looks like he's, he's found that level. Another player that's that guy, Nikita Kucherov. And, Dave, it's crazy because it's not like he burst onto the scene. We've watched this guy be amazing, phenomenal, fantastic uh, season after season. But somehow it still feels like he's stepping his game up, which is crazy because you you assume players are at their peak. And then when they surpass it, you're trying to figure out how. When you watch a guy like Nikita do what he does on the ice, regardless of how they feel about him in Toronto during the All-Star game, how is he able to continually lift his game up when he's already playing at such a high level? Yeah, it's hard to imagine that after the career he's had prior to this year, that he would find another level. But, Zach, I think he has. So consistency is a weird word because it's it's hard to argue that he hasn't been consistently producing points in past years. But I think the number of games where he is, if not the best player on the ice, one of the top two players on the ice, like we're seeing more of those games. Even the best players in the world have games where they are maybe not the best player on the ice. It just isn't happening for them. Right. And we're just not seeing that really with any any consistency in the other direction. Yeah. Kucherov. <laughs> Usually we come out of a Lightning game, even if the Lightning lose, and like Kucherov was dazzling. <laughs> and so part of it was, particularly in the beginning of the year, he was shooting the puck more. Mm-hmm. So his goal total went up. And particularly in the power play, where the Lightning, look, let's be honest, maybe the Lightning aren't where they are in the standings, if not for their power play this year, which has been fantastic. He has been the engine that has driven the power play. And what he was doing more on the power play, particularly at the beginning of the year, maybe a little less so now, was shooting the puck. And penalty kill units are like, seriously? Really? (laughs) Now he's going to shoot the puck, right? Because it opens up other options for him. And his goal total was much higher let's say at the halfway point Mm -hmm. than it had been in other years. He was on a pace to break his goal high, which he has, and his shot on goal number, which I I think he has, but that pace has slowed a little bit. But what he is doing is, and I I don't know that he's doing this better now, but (laughs) he's certainly doing it. He is a magician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is a wizard. And what I mean by that is when he has the puck and a stick, he might sell you four things. You don't know which of the four he's going to do, and he's going to pick one. And, and usually it's going to be the one that you haven't paid as much attention right, to. Right. And honestly, guys, like, points are funny. I haven't watched every minute of every game that McKinnon has played or McDavid has played, unlike Cooch, of course. Yeah. I'm not calling Edmonton mm-hmm. Oilers games or Avalanche games. But there have been a lot of points that have been left on the table for Kuchoff where he does everything that he normally does, mm-hmm. makes a play and sets up a teammate with an unreal chance, and that player is unable to finish. Goalie makes a save or gets defensive you know, slides yeah, over. Like there's a desperation yeah. play. And it's a little different than Austin Matthews, who I think should be in the MVP conversation too. But Matthews is doing it a lot by scoring. So Matthews is like I'm shooting this puck in. <laughs> like, he has control to some extent over what he does. Right. Kucherov is making his play, and then he's kind of reliant on his right. teammate to finish. How many more assists would Kucherov have if there had been a little bit higher efficiency at finishing some point. of these un, like unreal plays? Where are like, how did he find that guy? And the guy got a scoring chance that just didn't go in. He could have more than, what does he have, 136 points it's crazy, now? Man. He could have an even higher total I at, know. This, he's at just, this juncture. He's had such an incredible year, and... Man, I, I think it'll be a crime if he's not the MVP. I just imagine where this team would be without him, especially early on in the season without Andre Vasilevsky when they were really trying to find their way. We're chatting with the voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Dave Michigan. So tell us about this novel, man, Blind Squirrel. Again, you and I, we were speaking about this. I don't know if it was. It was definitely last year in 2023, yeah. and, and you're putting it all together. or starting to come together, and now, boom, you have it here with you. Paperback, Dave Mishkin, Blind Squirrel. Tell us all about it. And well, where'd the inspiration come first? And then tell us about the novel. 
So I wrote the book in 2022. I wrote it the off season of 2022. So when we were chatting about it, it had been <laughs> written. It hadn't been edited. And I discovered there was a long process from the point where it's like written, sitting in a Google mm -hmm. Doc to actually appearing in book form. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what's been happening over the last couple of years. And I was sharing with you some of that process, particularly last year. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Talk about man. this, guys. So, in Blind Squirrel, Noah Nicholson is a minor league hockey player. He's the captain of his team, and he's silently struggling with his mental health. His parents died in a car accident when he was 12, and he's dealt with mental health issues ever since. He's had a successful career, but then he sustains an injury and is forced to retire. And it's at that point he's able to begin the healing process. And the Noah at the end of the book is in a much better place than the Noah at the beginning of the book. And when people have asked me about this, look, this stuff is subjective, mm -hmm. just like broadcasting is subjective. <laughs> I understand this isn't mm -hmm. for everyone, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Good. And I will tell you, I believe it's a compelling story. I mean, you heard the plot, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is a compelling story. I believe it's an impactful story as it has the mental health component. We can kind of get into to that and why I decided to write a book that, that had that element in it. Uh, it's an accessible story. So... On non-sport shows, what I've said <laughs> is that there's hockey in here, but you don't need to know much at all about hockey right. to be able to enjoy it. And that is true. Seeing as this is a sports show, I will say that you will find, if you read this book, the hockey to be very authentic. And if you are a sports fan, I think the sports elements in here will appeal to you. But I understand that a lot of people who like sports don't necessarily like to read. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say this. I did not write a dense novel. The yeah. prose is crisp, it's clear, it flows. Mm. I don't think it's a hard read, even though I believe that there's depth to the story. Right. So I'll leave it at that. It's I certainly like that. a feel-good story. People mm. hear mental health and they think, oh, it's this deep, dark. Look, it's real. Like, mm -hmm. he's dealing with some stuff, it's weighing him down. But the arc is a positive arc. Like, he is in a much better place at the end than he was at the beginning. So I, I feel I wrote a hopeful book. And lastly, I'll say this, like, this may sound a little hokey, but it's a love story. So Noah meets someone later in the book. So mm -hmm. there's that component, a love between a man and a woman. But the time with his parents is not some, like, throwaway, like, mention. There's a pretty deep dive into what his childhood was like. So there's the love between a boy and his parents centered around sports in, in right. many areas. Uh, but also there's the love between the captain of a team and his teammates. And you, you hear about teams being called family and love that yeah. yeah i mean there there is that in there like how noah interacts as captain of his team with his teammates how he's the leader of his team the elements that i felt i was able to write because i've been around the game for as long as i have so yeah i'm really happy with how it turned out and you know we'll see if People agree with me, yeah. I guess. And it's one of the best things in sports, too, because we try to define so many things, but that's why we have even a blind squirrel finds a nut, like, in yeah. sports, because sometimes, as much as we watch it and we love it, some things are indescribable. It just They just happen. That's part of the beauty of sports. I, I know that, uh, at least on this show, and, and I'm glad that it dives into mental health, because Jay and I are very big advocates of that community, and, and it's not just person by person. Like, I'm a very strong believer that mental health and physical health very much rely on every person. Like everybody has those things. So I, I think that there's a lot to learn on the mental health side for all of us, whether we're struggling or whether we're in a good place, a bad place, there's so much that you can take from it. And I, and Dave, you've obviously been watching sports a long time. I love that the sports world is embracing it in a way now that it never has still some room to grow. Right. Yeah. But it, it has come a long way, even with that being said. And I think the fact that we're able to have novels like this probably speak to that as well. What, Drew, made you want to write this book? Where did the inspiration come from? And, and just how big of a thing in sports mental health is becoming in a good way? Yeah, it's funny you ask that, Zach, because I first had the idea for this story back in the late 2000s. And at that time... Much different world. Much different world. Wise. Yeah, mm -hmm. mental health was still kind of a taboo and both in the community and the, the people who maybe were struggling were hesitant to speak about it. And so I started writing it and I ran into a brick wall very quickly. I wasn't happy with what I had produced, which wasn't much. And so I put it away. And I actually have this on on the novel's website, which is blindsquirrelnovel.com, kind of the story behind the story. And it's in the book at the end as well. The Lightning were down in the playoffs in 2022 to Toronto, down 3-2. Now, they ended up winning that 
sixth game and winning the series and going on to the San Cup final and facing Colorado. But at the time, it was looking like maybe the first kind of longer off season that I had in a while. And so I said to my wife, Dulce, you know, at that point in the series, like, boy, if the Lightning go out here, what am I going to do with myself this summer? And she, <laughs> like, offhandedly was like, why don't you go back to that novel that you started all those years ago? And I went back to it not in that I sat down at the computer and started writing. I just started thinking about the story. And as the Lightning survived that series and mm -hmm. advanced, like, through the second and third rounds, I was just thinking about how would I make this story work? And all the roadblocks fell away. And by the time the Lightning got to Denver, I basically had the story essentially written in my head. Mm -hmm. And I started it during the final and then wrote it that summer. So, Zach, you asked about the mental health component. Look, I'll be honest. Like, I have dealt with anxiety over the years. Noah is not me. I definitely gave him different stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to deal with. But there's a wide range of, like, the spectrum of mental health is a wide one. <laughs> Yep. So Noah is not at the one end where like he needs intervention or anything like that, but he does carry around a weight and he is not living his best life. And I think that those are components that a lot of us share. hundred percent. And what Noah discovers is without giving away kind of the nuts and yeah. bolts of the book, basically he discovers mm -hmm. that it's okay to kind of manage that. Mm -hmm. Like you can actually live your best life even while some things are not quite operating properly. And that was important for me to write. I think that's been a little bit of my experience, but you know, this was not a memoir. People ask me like, you know, how did you come up with the different characters in the book? Because like Noah's character is very interesting to me just because he's kind of complex and cerebral and, you know, talented, he's an athlete, but you know, there are his parents, after the accident, he ends up moving in with his grandmother. She's her own character, his teammates, the love interest. And it was interesting in writing it. I found that all of the main characters had a little bit of me in them, okay. <laughs> which is how I was able to write them. Yeah, you know, of like, right. I didn't make them me, but like this character kind of is a little goofy, which I can be. And this character likes kind of figuring out how to solve puzzles, not jigsaw puzzles, Right. Those two. But <laughs> like his dad was a minor league catcher. So Noah grows up as a baseball prodigy. So there's a baseball component to this book. And I'm going to get to the Dave Wills influence as well here, which I want to get to before we have to sign off. But like his dad was a catcher and Noah grows up learning from his dad, like the sequence of calling pitches and how you, you call pitches to give your pitcher the best chance at success. And it's something they do as father and son, mm -hmm. watching games on television. I created that. But his dad is like, how do I solve this puzzle, right? Of like, do I start with a fastball in, mm -hmm. you know, based on this hitter? All right, we're down in the count, 2-0. and oh. What's my next pitch? There's that element to it. So a lot of the, the flashback elements revolve around baseball. And so there were, I think, a total of nine people that I reached out to who had knowledge in areas where, where I lacked. I had some knowledge maybe, but not mm -hmm. enough. And while Google is amazing, the internet is incredible. Yeah. It, like, <laughs> answered a lot of questions that I had about, like, all right, what's the answer to this? I can find it online. There are some mm -hmm. things that Google cannot answer. And so one of the people I reached out to was Dave Wills in the summer of 2022, and I had some really baseball specific questions for him. So like Noah's dad is a retired minor league baseball catcher, but he throws basically BP to Noah. Yeah. So one of the questions I had for Dave was like, all right, a guy who's been out of the game for 15 years, who is a retired catcher, what could he throw? Dave's like 70. Mm -hmm. How would I have known that? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And he's like, the top little league pitchers will throw 70, which mm -hmm. I guess I could have found that out. But no, but yeah, you, you know, make he the gave me that information. Yeah. And so I was so grateful. I mean, I, I Dave and I knew each other, mm -hmm. certainly, uh, as colleagues. And, and you know, we we met and we chatted. But I was so grateful that he was amenable to helping me with this. And we spent a lot of time on the phone together as I was like, I have another question. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have another question. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Um and of course, tragically, he passed away the yeah. following March. So I was really glad that that I was able to get 
a copy of the book to, to Liz, Good. his widow, and she was very appreciative. And in a way, it's kind of funny. Like, I read the chapter that I got the stuff from Dave because I had to edit this book again and again and again yeah. and again, right? Every time I read it, I think of Dave. So That's in awesome. a way, he kind of lives on in this book, which I'm... I'm really grateful for. It's a beautiful thing. And, and Dave, you've pledged to donate a portion of book sales to Tampa Bay Thrives, a coalition of community leaders committed to improving mental health and substance using disorder issues that you, uh, substance use disorder issues, excuse me, in the Tampa Bay area. You can get the book on paperback, digital copies of Blind Squirrel by visiting blindsquirrelnovel.com. It's also going to be available for purchase at the Lightning Team store on 4th Thunder Alley beginning on April 11th. I know you have a book launch and signing event also Thursday, April 11th, 5 to 6.15 uh, at Thunder Alley, man. Should be a yeah. good time. My goal is to try and get it in more retail places, and I think mm -hmm. the community, from the earlier returns they've been amenable and we'll get that on the website uh, there is an advantage to having it there you right. know when yeah. you walk into a store right. but i'm really grateful that the lightning have helped me promote this and really grateful that they've agreed to put it in the team store um but yes the one-stop shop is the website blindsquirrelnovel.com and we'll have information on where you cool. can get it send it over awesome. to us and we'll put it up on our page it'll be up on jayandzack.com dave mishkin the voice of the tampa lightning continue your great work and uh great job on the novel man can't wait to read it thanks guys thanks for having me in the one and only Dave Mishkin there, the voice of the Tampa Bay Lightning. What a great chat with him. When we come back, we'll speak to Mark Topkin from the Tampa Bay Times. What does he have to say about the Rays series with the Rockies and the upcoming series with the Angels? We'll find out together when we return. It's Jay and Zach. We know you've got a lot to say, so let us have it. Listen up, people. Can't get through on the air? Then follow us on Facebook and Twitter and throw in your two cents. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. From the Safe Touch Security Traffic Center. WDAE Traffic Update. No major delays on the interstates or bay bridges, just typical heavy traffic in Tampa on westbound I-4 from the Salmon Connector to the junction with I-275. Tampa accident on eastbound Fletcher at I-275 and another one on westbound Gone Highway near Nixon Road has injuries. Be on the lookout. Pinellas County accident, 70th Avenue North at US-19. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by KFC. Introducing KFC's $10 Tuesday. Get eight hot and juicy drums and thighs for just 10 bucks. Taste it for yourself every Tuesday, only at KFC. It's finger licking good. Prices and participation vary. Tax tips and fees extra. It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a layback Sunday. St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old For Blue Bell ice cream at your favorite grocer. If you can't find it, please be sure to ask for it. Savings. Now that's speaking the Lowe's language. And with my Lowe's rewards, your savings just keep coming. Save money with member only offers and earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards just for you. Because Lowe's knows you earned it, literally. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash my Lowe's rewards. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent 
consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Sheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in St. Pete, Lakeland, Brandon, Bradenton, and Tampa. 813-305-3000. If you're the victim of a car crash, never rush to settle with the insurance companies and never settle for just any attorney. Demand Anna Jar and Levine. Call 1-800-747-FREE for a free consultation and take back control of your life. Main office, Tampa. This March, it's time to join the winning team for your home loan needs. I'm Zach Blobner here on behalf of Howard Team Home Loans at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Right now, homeowners, debt is madness with credit card rates through the roof. It's time to march into those savings with Howard Team Home Loans and see what options work best for you. John and his team can coach you on your individual needs. It's time to break away from those high rates. So get off the bench and experience the slam dunk of a deal with home loans by getting started at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Lower LLC and MLS 1124061. Equal housing opportunity. Terms and conditions. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season, you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and StraightTalk.com. For network management practices, visit StraightTalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Pack your bags and stay close to the fun at Days In by Wyndham. Oh, I can't wait for our upcoming vacation. Me too. It's time to get away. Will you find us a hotel? Yeah. With comfy rooms. Oh, yeah. And free Wi-Fi. Uh-huh. Close to the action near all my favorite things, right? Right. Well, do you have an idea about where we can stay? I have 1,500 ideas. Seize the days at over 1,500 convenient Days In locations and earn Wyndham Rewards points on every stay. Days In, one of 24 trusted brands by Wyndham. Find your hotel at DaysIn.com. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. For over 35 years, we've grown by offering our clients more, more offices, more lawyers, and recovering more than $20 billion. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Good Greek moving in storage. Your superhero movers. For more information about contests on this station, go to 953WDAE.com slash rules. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. A commercial-free look back to alternative from the 2000s. We Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeartRadio, free, never sounded so good. iHeartRadio. Stuck in traffic? Signal cutting out? Get online. Download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Go to swing at a ground ball to... Short and it gets by Tovar in an in between hop and goes in the left field. Lau scores from third. Parade is on it first, and the Rays now have a 3 0 advantage. The angelic tones of Neil Solon's there on the Rays Radio Network, your home for Rays baseball right here, 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. We head to the Central Florida Behavioral Health Network DAE hotline. You can learn more at cfbhn.org to talk to our friend, Tampa Bay Times Rays insider Mark Topkin, joining us. On uh, the East Coast from the West Coast. He's in L.A. getting ready for the Angels series after that Rockies one. Mark, what's up, brother? How are you over there? Doing good. Uh, it's Weirdly, it's almost the same temperature here as it was in Denver yesterday, which seems odd, but I think it'll warm up a little bit here this afternoon. So. It, it is beautiful here in Tampa Bay, man, and we're ready to have you home after that series for sure. Uh, I'm assuming that prior to any baseball being played, you're going to check the humidor and the baseballs in L.A.? <laughs> I think uh, Pete Fairbanks is in charge of that department. He'll uh, he'll have a full report, I'm sure, once he gets through there. But yeah, that was uh, that set the tone for a wild weekend. That first game, and then uh, the other two, obviously coming out of the last pitch, and the Rays hanging on to win those. But 
a very eventful weekend in Denver, uh, kicked off by Mr. Fairbanks' uh, post. Well, what happened in the game and then certainly his explanation afterward. Yeah, and, and I guess just about the explanation afterward. Like, he was obviously irritated and upset about it. I mean, is I don't even know what to ask about this because I don't know what to take away from Pete going off about the baseballs. It just felt odd to me, Mark. Your reaction to his reaction. And look, Pete, Pete's a very emotional player and... and as a fan, you may enjoy that or you may not. As a journalist, it's kind of productive for us. I mean, he's going he's to be colorful and he's going to speak uh, sincerely and passionately. And he's done that a number of times. I remember the uh, walk off he gave up to Pete Alonso last year at the Mets. And uh, he took a few minutes afterward and they said, because he had to go to the batting cage and hit balls for a while to take out his frustration. And, uh, so he, he will tell you what happened and why or why he thinks it happened. And look, I, I, I honestly think he, I mean, in his mind, the ball did feel weird, right? We saw him throwing a couple balls out when he got on the mound. On the other hand, you know, they, this wasn't a surprise. They knew they were going to Denver. They were well aware that there's differences. They have players who've been there. They were, you know, they played catch pregame. There were guys warming up. Pete had a chance to talk to other pitchers, I'm sure, if he wanted to during the game. But in that moment, he felt like the balls uh, were not appropriately uh, have, didn't have enough tack to them. I guess or were were too dry. You know, you could look at it and say he's making an excuse. You could look at it and say he had a legitimate thing. You could probably be somewhere in the middle. But I, like I said, as a journalist, I applaud players who speak. You know, what they say is honestly and speak colorfully after games. That makes for good stories. Mark, I tried to tell you last week about Paredes and Ramirez only having three <laughs> hits between them, and now I check and they both have nine. So <laughs> you are the you know, Jay, the that, patience that, that you show. You you uh, all week long. I'm keeping an eye on both those guys, and every time Paredes hits a home run or Ramirez has a two or three hit day, I go, <laughs> Topkin got us again. I was going to send you like a picture of those guys when they got on base, you know, because like, I I. I just like we said about Pete, it's good for you guys to have strong reactions sometimes. Right. But a week into a baseball season, go get a coffee first, like before you, you spill that whole <laughs> passionate open on the show there. You know, go take a deep breath and accept, like we said, that was, yeah, the first 10 minutes of a Bucks game or whatever the ju- cutoff was when we were talking about it. But, yeah, and there's other guys you can pick on now, though. There's some other batting average that uh-huh. is still pretty low. But, yeah, both those guys both those guys look pretty good. I'm actually going to write something on Paredes for uh, Wednesday's Tampa Bay Times and kind of explaining his, uh, his uh, strong preference to pull the ball when he hits it out of the ballpark since he's hit 56 homers in the big leagues. They've all gone to left field. I would love to see a spray chart with Paredes and Ramirez. Oh, Ramirez, my. who loves to go the opposite field. Paredes, who loves to pull the baseball. That'd be pretty awesome. I mean, I could, I could probably just draw that for you. That's an easy one. <laughs> you don't I have mean, to go into the, the department for that. that. I mean, honestly, like a Yandy Diaz spray chart would be really right. interesting. You're talking about a guy who can use the whole field. I can draw, and I, I'm, I suck at drawing. I could draw you the other two. It would be up in the dolly before you knew it. The Mark hey. Topkin exclusive. Let me ask you yeah, about. Let yeah, me ask you about the, that's, that's where I'm headed. The catch, the catching <laughs> position. I mean, you know, I was just mentioning in the open of. We were told so much during, hey, this is Pinto's team. He's going to be the guy. You, we talked about it with you of, like, what the split was going to be like. You guys wrote about it at the times so of, yeah, Rene Pinto, he's taking more of a leadership role. And now you look at it, he's, he's kind of splitting time evenly with, with Ben Rortfed. Is it because Ben has done better than they thought? Rene's done maybe not as good as they thought? Like, what's with the kind of even breakdown when we thought it was going to be where Rene was going to take the lion's share of the duties here? Before I answer that, I do want to say that I would have won the bet because in my mind when uh, John called, I thought they're going to ask me about Fairbanks and then about the catching position. And there we go. So I, I forgot about you. Know, you're, mea, you're mea culpa on, uh, on uh, Paredes and Ramirez. That's I right. Forgot about That's that right. But, so I, I thought the same thing you guys did when Rortvet was in the lineup again yesterday. You're like, hmm, are we seeing a shift here? But – Again, it's baseball. It's a long season. They face two lefties uh, here in these three games against the Angels. So Pinto is going to play at least two of those games. So I think this was a matter of they like what Rortvet's doing. They're trying to get him. I didn't realize he is telling us that he's been trying to go down to the bullpen like early in the afternoon when guys are throwing. Like a starter throws a bullpen in between starts. And sometimes the bullpen catcher handles that. But Rortvet's been going down there 
catching these guys, just doing everything he can to familiarize themselves, you know, not just with their act, the physical, you know, mechanics, or not, not the physical nature of how their pitch breaks, but, you know, with personality-wise, what they like to throw, how they like to warm up, all the little things that you have to kind of learn. And so I figured he had done that with Pepio. I didn't realize he had not caught a ball Ryan Pepio threw until pregame yesterday. Uh, so that was pretty good work. Uh, you know, no, nothing at all. Obviously, no spring training for uh, Rortvet. But I, I think I, I thought the same thing, that maybe this was becoming a job share. Uh, it was pointed out there's going to be a couple lefties. I think there's a lefty who might pitch Sunday at Tropicana Field. It's Snell or something? Have you heard that name? I've, I think he's it's French. French. Yeah. It's French, I think. Yeah, so, you know, so there might be another lefty coming up this week that's pretty good. Um, so anyway, I, I, I do think that I, I thought Pinto, as we were saying, was going to play 110 games or something. He obviously got off to a little bit of a slow start. They like Rortvet. They want to get him acclimated. It makes sense to get him in some of these games you know, early on when you're trying to let everybody get their footing and split some time up. And having the lefty bat helps. I mean, I think that's you know, whether Cash wants to say it or not, you know, we, we've written how many times? They're missing Josh Lowe. They're missing Jonathan Aranda. You know, Richie Palacios looks like he can be a helpful player, but probably not hitting fifth in a lineup for a team that's trying to win a you know, playoff spot. Uh, and then, you know, they, you know, Shenton's gotten there a couple times. He got the hit yesterday. But, you know, it's another left-handed bat. It's another opportunity to make that lineup look a little differently. So I think there's a lot of reasons that got into it. But I, I do think it's still – Pinto's job, but I do think it's not also going to be a dramatic, as dramatic of a split as maybe they thought when it was going to be Pinto and Alex Jackson. And it helps too that Rortvet is actually hitting the ball when he's up there. I've been impressed by him so far at the plate. And, and some good at bats, right? He yeah, had a pretty big yeah. walk the other day too. So you're tough at bats, uh, and, and you know the, all that factors in, and you know I think that's part of it. No doubt, no doubt. So I, I've been impressed there. I can't say the same about one Tyler Alexander. Oh, um, I, I, you had to go there, didn't you? Well, I mean, I, listen, we know they're banged up. We know there's p uh, pitchers that they're hoping to get back in May and in June and July. A second rough outing, though, for Tyler Alexander. I, I know, Mark, you mentioned like Wagus back maybe being an option early in the season. What are they going to do with that fifth guy in the rotation uh, after Pepio or before Pepio, regardless of where it ends up? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that they're ready to give up on Tyler Alexander. I, I don't know. You know, they typically aren't overly reactive here. Um, they could switch to Waggish back. That would be the easiest move. You know, the Odorizzi thing looks like that's stalled now after him coming out of the game yesterday at Durham in the second inning. So I don't think that's going to be part of the solution. Uh, there's not a ton of options at AAA. Jacob Lopez has had a good start or two down there. So I don't have an answer for you. I mean, do they – just wait for Taj Bradley to get back. That's that's certainly an option, but I don't think he's started throwing uh, yet competitively, so that's going to still be a little while. You know, we thought maybe early May at the probably the soonest for that. Uh, Boz is obviously set back again, so yeah, they're going to have to do something to fill that gap. I just don't know that they're ready to make a change yet, and when they do, not not a ton of experienced options. Mark, do we have any other uh, injury updates? Like, who could we see next uh, returning, whether it's a Taj or a Low? Like, who's the next guy we got to be keeping our eyes peeled for the return? Yeah, pro it's they don't – Cash likes to do injury updates at home because I think he actually has the information there. <laughs> Whereas out on the road, it's more of like, yeah, I, I heard something about he's doing that. But I think, you know, when they're, they, he sees them and they obviously all – it all funnels through head athletic trainer Joe Bench. So, uh I don't know that we have much to go on. I don't think anybody is particularly close yet. Taylor Walls, they were talking about, would go down to uh, Port Charlotte around the middle of the month, around the 15th or so. So that's what, next Monday, I think, uh, and start playing in some like instructional league games and then kind of build up to where he can go off on a rehab assignment to Durham. You know, and the thing with Josh Lowe is once he gets ready, and Cash has pointed this out a couple times, the guy only played in two spring training games. So they're going to want him to still go get 20 or 30 at-bats somewhere even once he's ready to go uh so you'll probably still see him at durham for a week or two or a week and a half something like that looking forward to uh seeing you sunday at the ballpark mark for dave wills rays hall of fame induction i know there's going to be a good dae contingency out there it's going to be a special day for all of us and for everybody that's a rays fan so i know we'll have you next monday to kind of recap that day and all the happenings in rays baseball appreciate you so much for hopping on from the west coast here on jay and zach today he's mark topkin tampa bay times rays insider you can catch him at tampa bay.com mark thanks man work on those spray charts mark <laughs>
I've, I've got to draw them up right now. I got to get a crayon from the hotel front desk. <laughs> or see just you guys. Go, see you, buddy. That's great. Good stuff. He's right though. That's probably the easiest spray chart. My favorite spray chart from the weekend. Did you see? I reposted it. Mm. Rendon. Oh yeah. One hit since last July fourth. So the spray chart was one dot this down the third dot. base line. <laughs> Who they'll see. In the next few games. Maybe. Who knows? Rays, no, Angels. He might get hurt by then. Series starts I hope he doesn't today. get hurt. But The Angels, five wins themselves. So maybe not a uh, walk in the park for Tampa Bay. We'll see if they can keep the good times rolling. They won their first series. Can they win another one back-to-back during their first road trip? When we return, though, we're going to talk a little bit more college hoops. Calipari's gone. He ain't in Lexington anymore. Does it mean something for USF basketball? Mm. We'll talk about that and the future of college hoops here. You got that right. It is baseball season, so stop dealing with your gutter. Save time and money with my buddies at the Rhino. The Rhino is the world's only fully enclosed gutter system, which provides ultimate protection. No more climbing, no more clogging, no more hassle, none of that. The Rhino gutter experts hit a solution that'll be a home run for your budget. And if you act now, you can get a $300 service discount. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to the Rhino.com, schedule services Today, the Rhino.com, we're here to bat for you. Tell them, Jay Retro sent you. Watch the magic unfold. Your favorite WDAE shows The Drive with T Crash, Pat and Aaron, and Jay and Zach. Search WDAE on YouTube. Like and subscribe for a front row seat to the sports talk spectacle. Live and in living color. WDAE on YouTube. Like and subscribe. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. Similar to standalone games in the NFL, after following a team throughout March Madness, we have to be extra cautious not to overreact to a player's performance. And after a dominant tournament performance, we have to remain level-headed when projecting Purdue big man Zach Eady as an NBA talent. He will go down as one of the more productive players in the history of the sport, but the NBA is a different world. To become a true difference maker, versatility has become a necessity. Victor Wembenyama, Joel Embiid, the Joe Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, all great scorers with surprising handles in range. Edie's game doesn't fit that style. He's an old school style. Back to the basket score. That style of play often struggles in the NBA. Look at Jalil Okafor's career after Duke. So while the big man will certainly go down as one of the all-time greats in college, we can't let that cloud our judgment on that major jump he'll have to make in order to be successful at the next level. I'm Dan Patrick, and this is Above the Noise. The less your business spends, the more margin you keep. But everything else costs more. Smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system that brings accounting, financial management, inventory, HR onto one platform. It reduces IT costs and over 37,000 companies have already made the move. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering one-of-a-kind flexible financial programs. Head to netsuite.com slash Patrick. You know our trusted partner, TireRack.com, for their fast, free shipping, free road hazard protection, convenient installation options, and their great selection of the best tires, like the highly consumer-rated Yokohama Avid Ascend LX. But did you know they sell other automotive products? Wheels, brakes, and suspension, just to name a few. Everything you need to elevate your drive. You can go to TireRack.com slash Dan. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should sneezing, coughing, uh, stuffy nose, runny nose, post-nasal drip, interrupted sleeping. I just, I was groggy at the end of the day. Allergies and sinus congestion were making Jana miserable. Then a friend recommended Navage. Navage provides immediate drug-free congestion relief, flushing your nasal passages with refreshing saline and sucking out mucus germs and other airborne irritants. Navage helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel your best right away. Navaj gave me instant relief. I didn't have to wait 30 minutes. I didn't have to wait an hour, 90 minutes. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to wait a minute. I just, I ran the rinse and I felt immediately, I felt better. Stop suffering from congestion and start breathing and feeling your best again with Navaj. N-A-V-A-G-E. I've had people ask me how I find relief, and I tell them Navaj immediately. This thing is amazing. Navaj is available at Navaj.com or at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. Ronnie Lane here, joined by the MVP of the Holland Group Retirement Wealth Advisors, co-founder and president, Elizabeth Holland. The one thing I love most about football is the team effort it takes to win a game. All phases of the team have to work together and be at their very best to get the job 
work done. That's what your team at the Holland Group does every day, right? Your team of advisors, led by Steve and you, puts together comprehensive retirement plans designed to preserve and grow assets while applying tax advantage strategies to make sure your clients keep every single cent they are legally entitled to. That's what I call a win. That's exactly right. And unlike most other financial firms, we do it all under one roof. This is where the Holland Group becomes your X factor and we can design a customized, inflation-adjusted and tax-advantaged retirement plan. Nobody wins by sitting on the bench, so call the Hollands at 727-469-7939 or visit askthehollands.com. Let's make the rest of your life the best of your life. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. Some things in life you can just rely on, like the faithful friend who always comes when you call, your fishing buddies, and the tried-and-true performance of a new Rude Home AC system. So here's to reliability, built into everything we do. Rely on Rude. Get reliable cooling and comfort installed by a certified Rude Pro Partner. Go to RudeACFlorida.com to schedule service with a Rude Pro Partner today. That's RudeACFlorida.com. Powered locally by Ferguson HVAC. Unlock the secret to aging gracefully with age rejuvenation. Experience the distinction between simply aging and living vibrantly. When your body ages faster than time itself, it's a sign of biological aging. The primary predictor of chronic diseases, Age Rejuvenation's Vital Age Complete Test delves deep, analyzing over 75 age-related biomarkers to unveil the pace of your cellular aging. Find out how to slow, halt, or even reverse that aging process. Go to agerejuvenation.com today to schedule a free consultation. Men, are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Prestige Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Prestige Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 813-538-7931. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. Get your most accurate home value estimate at DuncanDuo.com. Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. We are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Rays fans around the globe. Over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. Welcome back, Jay and Zach. Some big news. In the college basketball world, no, it's not Final Four chatter, nor anything about people leaving for the NBA. But somebody is leaving, and that's Coach John Calipari. He's leaving Kentucky for Arkansas, as I like to call it, <laughs> Arkansas. Not surprising, but I guess, what, are you surprised? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. No, me neither. I mean, we, we were having this discussion I mean, it's still last a week. Thing, it is. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. But... You kind of saw this coming as far as the relationship that's deteriorating. Kentucky fans, Kentucky boosters, the AD, they want long runs into the postseason. And as much as it's cool to see your players playing at the next level, what the priority for John Calipari and all of the players that were going to UK turned into was, all right, we're going to use this place as a stepping stone to get to the National Basketball Association. That's not what the boosters want. They want to win. They want titles. They want championships. That's what they want to do. And now you get to a point where Coach Cal is going to leave for a place like Arkansas where I don't I wouldn't say it's a step back. Arkansas is a place that doesn't have any pro teams. They love their college college teams, especially their basketball team. 
I remember growing up that 1994 team with Nolan Richardson at the helm, uh, Corliss Williamson. That that was one of the teams of my youth when I said, man, that seems, and that building was rocking. Uh, I think this is smart for all sides. Move on before it deteriorates too much, and there's too many bad vibes there in Kentucky. The seat wasn't smoldering hot. The, listen, they got the national championship. They got a lot of good players on there. I think it's a good time for Kentucky and John Calipari to go their separate ways, and this is a huge boon for Arkansas. Yeah, crazy, because they lose their coach, goes to USC, leaves mm-hmm. for the West Coast uh, like a week ago, and... Out of all the places that Coach Cal could have left Kentucky for, to know he's ending up in Fayetteville is weird. It is an odd landing spot. I mean, that's a team who, don't get me wrong, has seen some success in the SEC in these last few seasons, and this year wasn't certainly one of them. But it's wild to me that you have a guy who, regardless of how you feel about his job in Lexington, he's a top 10 coach. I don't even know how you could argue that. I think you could even have an argument that he's a top five coach mm-hmm. in college basketball in today's game, but definitely a top 10 guy. And he leaves a job in one of the best three schools in the country for college hoops to go to Arkansas. I, it's just odd to me. I mean, look, and we saw not to go to Florida, but we saw the Gators and Mike White split ways. Georgia Bulldogs bring him in. They essentially trade for him, take on his salary, much different situation, much different coach. Yeah. I- the initial shock of it, not the initial, just the initial news. I was like, hmm, Zach, the more I look into it, the more I look into this, the more it makes sense. You go to a place like Arkansas where you're, it's not going to be as rabid as it is Kentucky, right? Fair. But you have a ton of money. You're talking Tyson money. You're talking Jerry Jones money. You're talking all, uh, people that yeah. they're going to treat him like gold. So he's still going to be in the SEC, right? Yeah. He's going to have to change his ways a little bit because I think he's going to have to do what he didn't do in Kentucky and kind of... Take a foray into the transfer portal and see if you can get some people that way. I don't think you're going to get as many McDonald's All-Americans initially at Arkansas like you did at Kentucky. But I think that's good for Coach Cal. He needs that. He needs a little bit of something to shake him up to change it. I think this makes a lot of sense for him because he's going to get the financial backing. He's going to get a lot of players to go with him, I believe. But he doesn't have all of the stress that comes with one of the blue blood programs like Kentucky. Yeah. And one of the things he said was, or that's been reported is that he's been thinking about this since February. Exactly. Which was wild to me. And he wanted to make sure that a, he had uh, an agreed upon NIL budget, which I would imagine is an insane amount of money based on the things you just said. And he wanted to make sure he could bring his entire freshman class that was supposed to be incoming in over, which is supposed to be either the top or one of the top two or three classes in the country. One of the guys in that class, though, does he end up at USF? The Knox brothers. Well, Kobe's there. Kevin's in the pros. This is my message to you, Carter Knox. Tampa kid, Tampa Catholic. You saw how crazy the Yingling Center got. Woo! When your brother, Kobe Knox, was knocking down threes for Amir Abdurrahim in the Bulls, going to the NIT. I know you had these lofty aspirations of going to Kentucky and playing for Coach Cal. Hey, I respect it. But now Coach Cal is gone. He's at Arkansas. Trust me, you don't want to go there. Stay here. Stay in the Tampa Bay area. Listen, we know it's only going to be for a year, maybe two. But who is going to develop your game better than Amir Abdurrahim? Look what he did with the Bulls. You're talking about a team that couldn't win more than 10 games. They're going to the second round of the NIT this year. Imagine what it's going to look like next year. You can be part of the rebuild. Think about it, Carter. Think about it. You're a kid from Tampa. You go to school at USF. You're a first-round pick. One day you're an all-star, a multiple-time all-star, and you're a Hall of Famer. You go down as one of the best athletes in Tampa Bay history. You can do that. Tampa Catholic, USF. One day in Springfield in the Hall of Fame. Carter Knox, decommit from Kentucky. Come <laughs> home to USF. Play for Coach Amir Abdurrahim and bleed that green and gold. And when we painted a picture, we said it was a long shot three months ago about something like this happening. But this was the picture we painted. Cal leaves Lexington. Open recruitment again. You have it all. Amir Abdurrahim has the season that they had at USF. You hear him? You hear Zach, right? I'm just, I'm just saying. You hear Zach, Carter. This was, Carter, you hear Zach. This was the you perfect situation to potentially end up in this Spot where he lands and he doesn't doesn't land here. He is here. He's home. Tell him. Tell He's, him. Zach. You're home. You're home. Don't leave. Stay home. Stay here, Carter. Green and gold, baby. When we come back, a look ahead for the Rays. What do they got going on against the Angels? And of course, we'll see what's going on in the AL East. Don't go anywhere. It's Jay and Zach, ninety five three WDAE, AM six twenty. 
This is Tampa Bay Sports Radio. 95.3 WDAE and AM620. Home of the best bolts coverage. WDAE. Traffic update. Traffic moving pretty well on the interstates and bay bridges with no major delays. Polk County crash, though, in Homeland, blocking northbound Highway 17 at Homeland and Garfield Road. Tampa accidents on eastbound Fletcher at I-275, Adamo and Falkenburg, and Hillsborough at Armenia. Largo crash on East Bay at Missouri, Clearwater, Druid at Highland. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by KFC. Introducing KFC's $10 Tuesday. Get eight hot and juicy drums and thighs for just 10 bucks. Taste it for yourself every Tuesday only at KFC. It's finger licking good. Prices and participation vary. Tax tips and fees extra. Men, are you suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? The medical providers at Prestige Men's Medical Center offer breakthrough treatments that eliminate problems in the bedroom without pain or surgery. 98% of men see instant results on their first office visit. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Men are even lasting 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. But that's not all. For a limited time only, call Prestige Men's Medical Center now and your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. You'll see instant results right in the office. You'll even get a gift that enhances your performance in the bedroom. All this worth hundreds of dollars is free if you call now. 813-538-7931. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. To design the Lexus ES, all we had to do was listen. Your ears said exactly where to put the speakers. Your eyes told us where to put the available head-up display. Hey Lexus, find me an alternate route. Even your right foot helped out. It let us know you'd enjoy a little more torque. Turns out, you had a lot to tell us. We certainly heard you. The Lexus ES, not just for you, by you. See your Wesley Chapel, Tampa Bay, Clearwater, and Sarasota Lexus dealers. You know International Diamond Center is the best place to buy diamonds and fine jewelry. But did you also know IDC will buy from you? Diamonds, heirloom jewelry, estate jewelry, Swiss watches, coins. Don't be afraid to come in and get a price on something that maybe it's an heirloom that you want to sell or you're just checking to see the price. IDC owner Keith LeClaire has a vast network of collectors and buyers around the world. So IDC can always find a market for your jewelry. We always pay a very strong price to buy. There's a resale market that's there and we pay top dollar for top merchandise. We have people all over the world that we sell to. So some collectors are going to pay way more than any consumer is going to pay. We'll give you the best possible price, no games played, and you'll get the check or the cash, whatever one you want. Let IDC appraise what's in your jewelry box. You might get a pleasant surprise. Sometimes they come in, they have no idea what's there, and then all of a sudden they walk out with a $28,000 check. International Diamond Center, online at shopidc.com. Ah, the sounds of baseball. But if you have hearing loss, you miss out on the action. Audible Hearing Centers provides a better quality of life for those suffering from hearing loss. Offering free hearing tests by trained specialists at their 26 locations. Don't buy hearing aids online. Get yours custom made. Make an appointment for Audible Hearing Centers at floridahearing.com. Better hearing through professional care. Proud partner of the Tampa Bay Rays. Attention landowners, got big plans for your land? Tackle all your spring projects with a powerful John Deere machine. And that was 0% APR for 72 months on select compact tractors, riding lawnmowers, and gator utility vehicles, plus up to $2,000 off select compact tractors. It's never been easier to get in the seat. Offer available April 1st through 30th. Visit JohnDeere.com to find your local dealer. For complete finance details, please call toll-free 1-800-226-8903. Hey guys, t Kraz here. For my friends over at Pool Perfection, Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder, the summer months are coming. Are you ready? Dive into the summer with Pool Perfection. They can build your pool in weeks, not months. They're Tampa Bay's most trusted pool builder. Tons of five-star Google reviews. And check out their beautiful new website, PoolPerfection.com. See their beautiful work for yourself. So if you're in the market for a new pool or pool remodel, call my guys over at Pool Perfection, 727-518-POOL, 727-518-7665. Tell them t Crash sent you. Hi, I'm Benny Jr. with Bartow Ford. 
The college basketball playoffs have always been one of my favorite times of the sporting year. Why? It's a chance for a small town school to beat a perennial powerhouse. Barto Ford has been that underdog, outselling big city dealerships every single day, every single year. We only do this by teamwork and taking care of our customers. It's just another way at Barto Ford we're different and we prove it. Hey guys, Jay Retro here on behalf of my friends at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. If you're looking for a place in downtown Tampa with a scratch kitchen, craft cocktails, expanded wine menu, and located just a few blocks from Amelie Arena, then Top Shelf Sports Lounge is the place for you. You gotta try their grilled wings and Ebor egg rolls, fan favorites, and they've got healthy options too, like sushi grade ahi tuna, the tuna bowl, and their power play salad. For more information, head on over to topshelfsportslounge.com. Everybody keeps asking, where can I go to get a drink or a bite to eat in downtown Tampa? My answer, always Top Shelf sports lounge. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's Mark Spain com and start packing. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. Today, we're the largest injury firm in the world, and I'm thankful to you for trusting us all these years. We'll always be here for the people, not the powerful. Injured? The choice is easy. Morgan & Morgan. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Dealing with your gutters is a swing and a miss. Let the Rhino Gutter Experts pinch hit for you. Schedule now and you can get a $300 discount on services. Plus, the Rhino offers military and senior discounts. So don't wait. Go to therhino.com and schedule services today. The Rhino, hitting home runs all day. Running to a meeting or just need to get away? No problem. Download the free iHeartRadio app where you can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free, free. never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Broadcasting from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios. The home of Bolts Nation before the ice was laid down in Tampa Bay. We are 95.3 FM, W237CW, Pendellas Park. And the mighty 620, WDAE, St. Petersburg. Streaming live right now on your free iHeartRadio app. All your sports, music, talk, and podcasts. Hey, Lightning fans, free has never sounded so good. Welcome back, Jay and Zach, 95.3 WDAE and AM620. If you missed our interviews with Dave Mishkin, Mark Topkin will be up on our page, jayandzach.com. Rays back in action tonight against the Angels. I still want to call them the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. It was such a weird way to name a team, and they got everybody used to it, and then now it's just, all right, Los Angeles Angels, that's it. Uh, there you they're go. not in Los Angeles. I know. I don't. Again, when we went there, easy Santa Clara, a couple of seasons. Yeah, but at least there's like not another team. Like you're like, oh, we just want to broaden our fan base. Are they like by spreading the LA blanket? Are they getting more fans? I think they are because I feel like the Dodgers have that market cornered. They really do, especially with Otani on board now. <sighs> God, how bad do you have to feel if you're the Angels? The one thing, the two things you had that the right? Dodgers didn't have were Trout and Otani. Then Trout's hurt half the time, and Otani goes to the Dodgers. That that's got to kill you. It's odd. And again, all jokes aside, this is a team with five wins, the Angels, and they're not. I don't feel nearly as confident in the Rays, even though they just won a series and they took two out of three in Colorado. I feel less confident now in them taking a series against the Angels than I did before the Colorado series. Mike Trout uh, is the big name, obviously. Four home runs on the season. He's eight for 32, batting average of 250 on base of 351. And listen, this is a guy, you just want to avoid him at all costs in the middle of the lineup, no matter what. Uh, they just came, they, they're coming off of a series against the Baltimore Orioles where they dropped, oh no, excuse me, that's what they started the season with, two out of three. Um, they lost that. They, what, they, two out of three against Boston as well. How about the Red Sox, man? Got to watch out for them. They are playing mm -hmm. their asses off. Um, but it's Trout and your guy, Rendon. You're a big Rendon guy, aren't you? He's a bum. I don't think there's one baseball fan that likes him at this point. 
Understandably so. Tickets as low just as... just doesn't even care anymore. Tickets as low as $3, by the way, today in Los Angeles. Or Anaheim, How old? excuse me. $3. How old? How much? <laughs> 3 bucks. You can get tickets. Now, tomorrow, to be fair, if you want to go to the Tuesday game instead, $4. So, save your money. Get the $3 tickets today. Or the $3 tickets on Wednesday. Bro, what? Tickets as low as $3? I can't be real. The Rays will face left-hander Tyler Anderson on the mound tonight. 34-year-old left-hander, as we just had the conversation with Mark Topkin a little while ago. Rene Pinto should be the guy behind the plate against a couple of left-handers, but we do not know. Uh, Mr. Duck, that's his nickname, Tyler Anderson, former Oregon Duck. First-round pick out of the Colorado Rockies back in 2011. Um, Soft-tossing lefty, you're not. he's not going to break the radar gun. So big thing for the Rays, you're going to have to be able to stay back and go the other way. That sounds like a perfect recipe for a guy like Yandy Diaz. So if you want to talk about like a pick to click or a guy to keep an eye on tonight, I think it's Yandy Diaz early and often. Tyler Anderson is a pitcher that is tailor-made for Yandy. Yeah, and, and again, as much as I just kind of went pessimist on the start of this series, they're throwing out Eflin, Savale, and Latell. You so feel happy about that. Those are the three guys you want to roll with. Uh, I know Zach didn't have a, a great outing against Colorado in that first game of that series. But, uh, yeah, these three guys, I, I, I like them heading into the matchup. And, you know, I, I, I just I want to be excited about this team. I do, Jay. I want to be excited about the Tampa Bay Rays. What's the, most, what's the one thing that gives you the most optimism then? Is it a guy like Pepio? It's, but it's tough, though, because it's hard to put it on one pitcher. Right. You know, no, I agree You look at you. a rotation. Like I said, these three guys in a row I can get excited about. Throwing Eflin, Savale, and Littell out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, unless Zach starts to kind of continue to sink a little, he, he's got to pick it up. But And Pepio gives you another option. You know, Taj will be back at some point. Um, it isn't the bullpen. I'm terrified to see any of the bullpen arms come in at any point to try to get them either through a game where they're already leading or hold the uh, deficit to what it is. So it isn't the bullpen. You know, I still get excited watching Diaz and Randy get up to bat. Like yeah. those are still big draws for me. Randy's scuffling a little bit. A little though. bit, but he's been making me money on strikeouts. Um <laughs> Brandon Lau is another guy. What no? I love your priorities lie. <laughs> Brandon, hey, good job, Randy. You're striking out, but you're making me money. Brandon Lau's healthy. We talked about him and his injury. Well, he played in the first game See, off the bench. Twisted his ankle. Almost yeah. The second game, I'm like, oh, right here we back go. at it. Here we go. I but I don't like that's not a guy I watch walk up to the plate and expect literally anything from. Low I don't. expectations on Lau. Him and then again, you go through the rest of the lineup. I like I get excited about Siri when he's on base. Does that make sense? So like yeah, he's got he's got chance for a pop though. Like he's got yeah. pop in his bat. And I don't disagree. It, and it's just tough because majority of the time he's probably going to strike. He's going to strike out more than he hits home runs. That's for sure. Yeah, defensively, like I I hold my breath every time there's an opportunity for a double play. And they didn't. I don't recall this weekend them dropping any pop flies, but there mm-hmm. was a lot of traffic on a lot of those pop flies where guys were there was like three minimum players flying around a pop fly ball. And, like, Yandy's either, like, diving backwards for it or series sliding. And I'm like, they're communicating, which is good. But it's <laughs> it's a lot of traffic until that last second of, I got it. Yeah. And it's it just feels like one of those things where you're you're waiting. They're going to collide at some point if they don't, sw- you know, hammer out the, the, the inconsistencies of that traffic in the field. So well, it, there's a lot more things I'm worried about. And, and one series isn't going to qualm those fears. Um I, I, I hope, I, I mean, like, again, if they won two out of three here. And you wanted won. them four and two. That's what I yeah. asked you on Friday. What's a successful road trip? And you said four and two. Yeah. But it almost seems like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it almost seems like it's more about, I know it's cliche, but more about the process of how they get the wins rather than just the overall result. But, you know, and I don't know, I'm not saying I disagree with you because I think there is some semblance of that. Like, all right, that's great if you go four and two, but if you're you're squeaking by teams that you should beat, should that give you a little bit of a, a, a caution, some buyer beware, or should you look at it being that it's so early in the season and all they need to do is kind of hover around 500 until some of these exactly. starters get back? Should we be a little bit more grateful for victories regardless of how they come? So for me, it's about just treading water and staying close to 500. And they're 500, you know, they're, they're right there. They're right at the the mark. So 
I, again, I'm like, I don't think anything's going to change where all of a sudden I'm excited about Tyler Alexander or whatever other options they have. But I would be excited about this rotation if instead of him it was Taj Bradley, Shane Boz, Jeffrey Springs, Drew Rasmussen. And that's certainly something we're expecting to see at some point this season. So, like, I think by, you know, the end of summer, we're going to look at a rotation that we can get excited about. The bullpen's a little harder because those guys just got to figure it out. Like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, if it's one guy or two guys, okay, well, then we're going to interchange and figure out just the mix of it. The Put them in the blender, as John Cooper would say, on the hockey side. But right now, you're just having a bunch of arms that are inconsistent out of the pen, and that's the crew. You might add an arm or two and, and grab some guys off the scrap heap, but, like, that's the area where, like, they just have to flat out be better. From Fairbanks to Maton to Adams, all of these guys. Um so that's an area where it won't change. And then really, again, on the injury front, like it's, whether it's Palacios or any of these other guys, you're going to get a Josh Lowe back. You know, I saw John, Johnny Aranda just tweeted out he expects to be back within a week, fingers crossed. So I didn't even think about that when we had Topkin on. Jonathan Aranda tweeted out today he hopes to be back next week. So that maybe is the first guy we sing, see back. But, you know, he's going to be playing infield, right? So, like, does he bring more pop than Brandon Lau has since his grand slam in game two? That, that's a question worth it. But I wouldn't get excited about him. I was in spring, but, like, that is faded through this injury that he's had to start the year with. Yeah, you know, I love the uh, whip stat when it comes to pitchers. And cool. I just look at some of these guys just because it, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. It's black and white. Walks plus hits per innings pitch. How much traffic are on the base pass? You keep hitters off the base pass, you're going to do a good job, and you're probably going to put your team in a position to win. A whip around one is great. P. Fairbanks' whip is three. He's played three games so far, so what you're telling me is that on average, Pete Fairbanks lets it on, you know, he has three guys on base per outing. You know who also has three? Phil Maton. Wagusback, three. Clevenger, 2-2-0. Two, two, oh. Alexander, one nine three. Like, that's a lot. It's not just these guys are, it's one bad pitch. It's just multiple, and that's what's a little worrisome to me is it's not, okay, well, you're coming in for one batter, you give up one pitch, it's a home run, hey, those inherited runs score, it is what it is, you get out of the inning. Right. Or you give up a double, two run score, and then you get out of it. The problem with these guys is that they can't put a Band-Aid on, it just continues, it snowballs down the hill, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And that is so rare for this Rays team because throughout the years, their bullpen has been so good. But this year, we've seen some very uncharacteristic traits from these guys, and they have to turn it around because you're not always going to be able to get back into the game like we've seen them do the last couple of days against Colorado. No. And again, taking the big picture look here, you know, at 5-5, five and five, they're not in the basement. That belongs to the Blue Jays at 4-6. and six. So... You know, that, that's a team that we see that's, you know, I, I think they're very similar in, in what maybe their year looks like, but I have more faith in Tampa Bay to be better by the end of it because of all the injuries uh, that they're dealing with on the front end. Baltimore is at 5-4. and four. They're not hitting the ball well. The Pirates, man, that series with Baltimore and the Pirates I thought was one of the most fun it was. of the weekend. You had a, 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 a extra inning games. You had walk-offs. You had chaos. Um, obviously, if you're an Orioles fan, you didn't enjoy it as much, but I thought that was a fantastic series between those two teams, and then it's a big reason why Baltimore is five and four right now, behind Boston at seven and three, and the Yankees still doing work at eight and two with no Garrett Cole in the rotation. Yeah, the Yankees are humming in the offense really, and the one guy that's really making a huge difference. Who not many people. He was my rookie of the year last year. Was Anthony Volpe? Man, this guy at shortstop. He won the Gold Glove as a rookie last year. He was three for four again yesterday. He made the team out of spring training last year by just crushing it uh, in the preseason. And he's just a guy. If you have a guy like that batting ninth, we spoke about this with Jose Siri. He flips the lineup over. And now Torres and Soto and Judge and these guys are getting up with runners on base. So even though the Yankees still have some struggles in the bullpen, they had some issues the last couple of days. Man, they're hitting so well. And they're even though the run differential is plus 10, it's more because of the runs that they've given up rather than the runs that they've scored. Who scored the most runs in the ALE so far? The Boston Red Sox. 7-3 and three through 10. Some surprises there, but you know when you have Rafael Devers, you always have a chance in the middle of that lineup. We'll see when the competition raises for teams like Boston. Baltimore 5-4, and four, as you alluded to, and the Blue Jays pulling up the rear at 4-6. and six. Saw some more issues with Bo Bichette at shortstop and Vladdy Jr. at first base. It just seems like it's the same story with the Blue Jays. They look exactly the same as much as everybody 
Oh, they're going to take another step forward. Kevin Gossman, who a lot of people thought could be a, a sneaky AL Cy Young candidate, his velocity was way down, which usually is a precursor for not good things when it comes to the arm situation. Did you see that story from the MLB Players Association mm-hmm. blaming the pitch clock it's the for the arm thing. injuries? It's the dumbest thing. You know I have those stats. and We should probably do it tomorrow when we have more time. Yeah. Um Pat and Aaron, I thought Pat and Aaron did a great job breaking it down today. We have a couple of other it. big injuries, which is why this is all coming yes, to be. Both of my, uh, these guys were my Cy Young picks last year, <laughs> ironically enough. Shane Bieber and Spencer Strider. Who both looked fantastic God, to man. start the year this season. It's an epidemic. And I, we we have a lot to say on this. Not enough to do right now. We we're going to do it tomorrow. We do that tomorrow. Uh, Dugas, remind us tomorrow if you don't mind, sir. Um yeah, I had Louis Castillo. We all had Spencer Strider as our NL Cy Young winner, and that's not going to happen. But, yeah, Dugas, remind us tomorrow. I want to really get into this because Keith Meister said something. The guy who did the operations on Drew Rasmussen, Shane McClanahan, Dr. James Andrews also put in his two cents. And it's ironic that those two guys who have operated on the large majority of the players that have gone under the knife for arm injuries said two different things on why <laughs> this has happened. So, I mean, I don't mean to laugh because I know it's a serious thing, but it's just ironic, and we've got more to add to that as well, and I don't think it's so cut and dry. There's a lot that has gone into this, and it's unfortunately something, Zach, that I don't see going anywhere time, anytime soon just because the velocity and the spin rates, that's so important to people, and I also spoke to somebody this weekend that had some insight on the Shane McClanahan injury on why he got injured and, you know, one of those things of it's inevitable, the inevitability of it, the, the amount of pitches, what kind of pitches, the velocity of these guys. So again, we're just kind of touching on the, you know, on the outside of this, but tomorrow we're going to take a deep dive into what was said by Tony Clark, the MLBA, MLB PA president, and also the doctors, Dr. Meister and, and Dr. James Andrews and, and to see, you know, why there's such a prevalence of these arm injuries. Yeah, uh, it's just, it sucks for the game. I mean, I'm not a Braves fan, obviously, but Strider going down, Bieber going down. This is on top of, again, we'll see how it ends up, but Garrett Cole's already banged up for New York. Uh, you look at the O's, I think Bradish, right, went down in spring training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- the list is long. If you sucks. look at the last three years, the list is stupid long. Was it Yuri uh, from the Marlins, yep. Sandy Alcantara? There's like just so many different and guys. You mentioned man. McClanahan. That's just one of the three. Four, if you count Shane Boz that the Rays are dealing with. Tyler Glassman had come back from it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's hard. I understand that, like, it's injury and there is an inevitability to it. They have to figure out something. Like, this is, I don't want to say it's ruining the game because it feels dramatic, but it is damaging the game in a way where nothing else, It this is as big of a deal to Major League Baseball as the steroid era was in terms of what steroids, now it's very different things. There are two sides of the spectrum. But you're talking about ace pitchers multiple a year, going down with Tommy John, and then that's happening every year now? This is hurting the game, at least in terms of, I think, optics and and viewability and watchability, as much in a very different way as the steroid usage did when it started to come out. Like, you're not seeing the best pitchers every year now, because they're all hurt. Like, it is... it. It's really frustrating. As a baseball fan, like, I I hate to see it, and that's the Rays aside. The one thing I will point out, and I've already done this for the last three years, Rays fans feel like they're the only ones that deal with these injuries. It's not, guys. It's baseball-wide. It's not. It's baseball-wide. It is not. Uh, You know what? I'm going to reach out to Coco Eaton, and I know he's done a bunch of injuries and a bunch of surgery, a bunch of surgery, excuse me, um, over the years on a multitude of pitchers, so I'd love to... Get him on the show and see what he has to, you know, let's get one of the crazy, the foremost uh, authorities on the situation. I think that would be a, a very enlightening conversation. Uh, when we return, speaking of enlightening conversations, March Madness ends tonight. UConn, Purdue, we'll break it down. We'll give you our predictions for the game. We'll also look back at a crazy weekend in sports. Uh, Zach's going to ask me some questions, put me on the hot seat when it comes to WrestleMania, USF Rowdies, Luke Warm Seat. Okay, a Luke Warm Seat, we will do that as well. But before that, I got to tell you about my friends at Top Shelf Sports Lounge. One of our listeners, Debbie, hit me up over the weekend for the Lightning game on Saturday against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and there was a ton of of Lightning fans there at Top Shelf Sports Lounge right there, just a couple of blocks from Amelie Arena, watching the game. It was such a great sight to see. 
beautiful. Man, if you've never been to Top Shelf Sports Lounge, I implore you, go. You have to. It's so nice. Right there, and, and, and people always ask, Jay, where can I go? I'm looking for something new downtown. I'm looking for a new restaurant, new place to eat, new place to get a drink. Top Shelf Sports Lounge is the place to go. There's TVs. Let's say you wanted to watch something else. You can go there and watch that. There's so many TVs. They got, you want grilled wings? They got that. Ebor egg rolls, maybe a little bit of a healthier option. Don't think that you're left out because you go to a place like Top Shelf Sports Lounge and they don't have healthy options. They've got ahi tuna and the tuna bowl and the power play salad as well. Go there, take a picture, tag me in it, tag the show in it. Let me know what you feel, what you like, what you like about it, what you think. Everybody keeps asking, where can I go to get a drink or a bite in downtown Tampa? My first answer, always Top Shelf Sports Lounge. Today, Tampa Bay Rays baseball is live on WDAE. Deep down the line to the corner, home run. Don't miss any of the action as the Rays take on the Los Angeles Angels. Coverage starts at 8.30 on the home of every Rays game all season long. 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming across Tampa Bay on the iHeartRadio app. WDAE. Traffic update. Traffic moving pretty well on the interstates and Bay Bridges. 275 looks good over the Sunshine Skyway through St. Pete, over the Howard Franklin, and in Tampa. Accidents in Pinellas at 49th Street North in Elmerton and at Walsingham Road near 146th Street North. Hillsborough County accidents to watch for Bomb Riverview at Gordon Drive and Adamo Drive at Falkenberg has officials on scene. With traffic... I'm Amy Snyder. This report is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. What could you do in 15 minutes? How about a premium oil change? At Valvoline Instant Oil Change, our certified technicians will guide you in, use only premium products, and get you back out on the road in no time. Quick, easy, trusted. That's Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It pretty much hurt doing anything. I couldn't ride a bicycle. You don't have your life because you don't have your mobility. So when Patrick heard about QC Kinetics and their non-invasive regenerative treatments for pain, no waiting, he called them immediately. There's no downtime. There's no rehab. That was the tipping point for me. I didn't have to take any drugs. I didn't have to rehab. Before considering surgery, check out QC Kinetics all-natural treatment options that restore and repair damaged joint tissue in your knees, hips, shoulders, and back. If you have knee replacement surgery and then the knee is not yours, then there's no guarantee that that's going to be successful. QC Kinetics. Patients around the country are raving about the results. They're getting back their mobility, taking back their lives with no downtime, no drugs, and no surgery. Don't wait. Call QC Kinetics today for your complimentary consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in Bradenton, St. Pete, Lakeland, and Brandon, 813-305-3000. It's the first day of the first grade, and she found a new best friend. It's a late St. Louis brought the world gooey butter cake. Now Bluebell brings us gooey butter cake ice cream. A cake batter ice cream with a luscious cream cheese swirl and gooey butter cake pieces. Mmm, it's the gateway to the best in pints and half gallons. The good old days are being made right now. The good old days for Bluebell ice cream at your favorite grocer. If you can't find it, please be sure to ask for it. Believe it or not, most small businesses don't have a 401k. If you don't have a 401k, you are missing out on the greatest wealth creation tool ever created. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and many 401ks are overpriced for the employer, have expensive and underperforming investment options, and have tedious administrative provisions. Not at Trajan Wealth. We can set up a 401k for a company for only 8 bucks per employee, a $65 per plan fee, plus a small advisory fee. That's right, not thousands or even the tens of thousands you've been quoted. And do it all in less time than it takes to sit in traffic. If you have five or more employees, these 401ks will help you attract and retain top talent. And if you're an employee and don't have a 401k, tell your boss, call Trajan Wealth today. 
Call 813-550-1000. That's 813-550-1000. Services offered through a third-party partner. Climbing ladders to clean your gutters stinks. For only $1 per foot, let the gutter experts at the Rhino clean your clogged gutters before they cause damage to your home. That's right, just a buck a foot. You enjoy your game day while they do the dirty work. Go to therhino.com and schedule your cleaning today. Hi, this is Earl Ron. New South makes windows that are both energy efficient and hurricane resistant. New South is the factory and eliminates the middleman. New South South windows are made in Florida. Four Florida homes by Florida workers because we know Florida weather. Going on now, save 35% off factory direct windows and doors. Call 1-800-NEW-WINDOWS. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. It's Freddie Prince Jr. and Jeff Dye back in the ring for an all-new season of the Wrestling with Freddie podcast. That's right, Freddie. Get ready as we highlight the most jaw-dropping matches, dissect the fiercest feuds, and uncover the latest twists and turns in the world of pro wrestling. And we obviously can't wait to hear from you, the Federation. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Listen to Wrestling with Freddie on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. When you can't crank up the speakers in the office, plug in those earbuds and download the free iHeartRadio app. You can take WDAE and your home for sports, music, talk, and podcasts all in one app. Free never sounded so good. Presented by the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine, accident attorneys. Call 1 800 747 free. That's 1 800 747 3733. Sergachev on the ice again. Oh, wait, that was off air. We're back at it. Jay and Zach. Zach Blobner, Jay Retcher. It's picture day for the Lightning, you said, right? What happened here? Okay. What's happening anywhere? Nothing yet. Uh, the eclipse is happening in about 30 minutes. Once upon a time, I was falling in love. I told John I thought Black Hole Sun, we should have played it like every hour on the hour. Um, We're going to look ahead and look back. There's a lot to get into. From the national championship game happening tonight between UConn and Purdue, WrestleMania's two days, Saturday and Sunday, USF's action, the Rowdies stay unbeaten, all of that. But first, I got to hear your opinions on the Eclipse, Jay. Uh, Yeah, I thought it was cool. That's it. That doesn't happen yet. That's all I got. What are you talking about? Dude, it happen? I, I thought, just saw. I just went there. I thought yeah. we had it at, our peak was at 3 o'clock. I just saw it. Somebody sent me a chart at like 10 a.m. I said with all due respect. I, uh. So I got the glasses out there. Yeah. The great Kim Kuzmano who won our fantasy WrestleMania thing on Saturday night. See, Kim, you got credit. You're not even listening to the show. Yay, sports. She gave me the glasses. I went out there and you could see the sun. Oh, you and, put the glasses on. And then the moon is covered just like that much. It was pretty cool. Should... I, did you see the picture of T. Crass wearing the glasses? Huh? Tom Krasnicki? I don't know. He should wear them the entire show. Yeah. Just just, just wear them. Rock them. <laughs> it's like shades. Uh, yeah, I'm not he big on He already throws shades at us about That's our race takes. So we might as well wear them. That's what I'm saying. Fits the bill. Uh, yeah, I could care Love less. Love you, Tom. I couldn't care less, I should say, about the eclipse. Um, oh, I thought you meant Tom. Giving us shade. <laughs> no, no, no. Throwing shade. No, 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 no. I know people are paying attention <laughs> to the eclipse. It's a big... Today's an eclipse day. A lot of people paying attention to it. Um... Let's talk a little bit right now about the national championship tonight. It's the matchup that college hoops wanted. Yeah. It's the best two teams in a country. I don't think many would argue. And this is a clash of Titans in a way that the two other final four games weren't to get here. But I think that after watching Purdue struggle to really put their foot pedal to the metal, get it going against NC State, like if that's the game that they roll out against UConn, they're going to get beat by double digits easily. I don't expect that, though. I, I think they're going to come out. Matt Painter's going to have Zach Eady and that's, that team ready. I think they're going to shoot better earlier. I, I doubt they'll start cold for the second straight first half from beyond the arc. Um, but I just can't talk myself into a situation where UConn doesn't win this game. Yeah, and Zach Eady's going to have to be the man. But Donovan Klingon, he's... Right. He's a guy that can kind of match up with him and, and do a much better job, I think, than whatever the hell NC State was doing. I thought that was a just a terrible game plan overall. Um, yeah, I don't want to count out. I feel like that's the easy pick today. I feel like the easy pick is UConn. They're, what is it, six-point favorites? People are wondering, like, if Purdue plays like that, they're, well, they're not. They're not going to play the same way. And I also don't think that UConn's going to play the same way against Edie that U- NC State did. How are the officials going to officiate this game? That's going to be a huge part of it. Again, Edie went to the line two times against NC State. Look at some of the other games in this postseason. How many times that dude went to the line? If the game is officiated close and 
let's say he's on the line six or eight times in the first half alone, slowing that game down, that could work to the benefit of Purdue. The problem is, is that for all the stuff with UConn, they can, they're just like a, they're like an MMA fighter. They're like a new aged MMA fighter, UConn. They can beat you standing up. They can beat you on their back with jujitsu. They can out wrestle you. They can kickbox you. They can hit you with the jab and beat you like an old school boxer because they were just an offensive juggernaut last year. Now their defense. And again, I look back to the turnovers, 16 for Purdue in the final four, the most out of all four teams, and they won. You better take care of the basketball or UConn is going to make you pay because UConn's defense is better than NC State's. If they take care of the basketball, I think we're in for an instant classic. If they don't, I think UConn can run them out of the building. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited about it either way. Me too. Uh, I hope it's a good game. I'm excited too. I thought, I thought we were spoiled a little bit on the women's side with South Carolina and Iowa. God, and that we, was such a good game too. We chatted about that a little bit earlier. So I'm hoping we can kind of continue those good vibes into tonight's action. Uh, certainly something we're going to keep. We'll, we'll react to tomorrow regardless of what the outcome is. Some other things that happened this weekend. Come on, you rowdies. Come on, you rowdies. Stay unbeaten. A draw up in Pittsburgh. I'm not happy with that. You wanted to win. Yeah, I just, I got I got questions. My guy Leo wasn't starting again. They just put out this video about he's wearing number 10 instead of wearing number 11. It's a good video. I, like I love it. that video. Yeah. Um, but again, like, he, what's up? Like, he wasn't in the <laughs> squad. Up? I think he's banged up, so maybe that's the reason. But if he's not full, I, like, I have questions about the Rowdies. I have questions if Leo's not 100% because he's such a big part of the team. And I feel like, you don't have Connor Antley anymore. You don't have J.J. Williams. Um, what's the identity of this team? I think I think they're still finding it. We know how good Cal Jennings is and Forrest Lasso and those guys, but where's the identity of the Rowdies, man? They got to find that for sure. Yeah, and so that was part of what was going on. I knew you were pretty busy. You're rocking the shirt today. Yeah, baby. USF, a sweep boom, on their boom, side boom, for boom. baseball. Rumble at the red. So you told me all about it prior to the game and the event and the pageantry and everything surrounding it. I kept up with it as best I could. I thought did they did a great a, job. They did a great job on social media they with did. all the stuff they were putting out there. Like seemed very entertaining from afar. Take me inside that though. Listen, I would, if you can right now, I want to see what our J and Z listeners can do. Go to our stream right now, Facebook, Twitter, no Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Mm -hmm. I want you to take a screenshot of this shirt, rumble at the red. I want you to tag USF Baseball, tag Bruin at McEwen and all those guys, and show them some love. Go Bulls. Horns up, baby. Rumble at the red. So they won all three games against Wichita State. Going into the series, they were number one in the conference. Not no mo. as USF took care of business Friday and Saturday. Three run home runs in each of those games by Ben Rosenblum, a.k.a. Ben Rosenboom. Boom. And then... They were down 2 nothing in the ninth yesterday. Drew Brutcher with the two RBI double and then a big bunt from Cole Robertson. Sickles high own yesterday to sweep the series. But yeah, Friday night was rumble at the red. And shout out to my guy, Dave Albrecht, the SID. Uh, Connor, who does a great job with the digital creation over there. Um, their graphic design guy and head coach Billy Mole. Everybody over there. It was a wrestling theme. They had wrestling videos up on the big screen in between innings, like the big super kick from Shawn Michaels on Shelton Benjamin. But instead of Shawn Michaels, it was a USF logo. And instead of Shelton Benjamin's face, it was a Wichita State logo. And on the ESPN Plus broadcast, Zach, they had a bunch of pictures of the players with different shirts on. So I was able to like go full WWE nerd there That's and talk awesome. about Roman Reigns and John Cena. And I'm working with the great Jim Lauk, and he's like, I don't know what any of this <laughs> means. It was hilarious. So shout out to the Bulls. Really, really good time. Great weekend. They embraced WrestleMania, and that's the big reason why they swept Wichita State, a really darn good baseball team. And to that point, like Jim Lauk, I, uh, I also have questions about wrestling. Answer. WrestleMania this weekend. Yeah, baby. Two days worth. I did watch a little bit of day two. Oh, okay. I didn't see any of day one, I'll be honest oh, with you. Okay. Uh, I just got the recap of it, uh, I don't know, online and from people that watched it. So before we get to the main event and all the, the things that happened, my guy, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, your guy. Wins the belt. Champ. He's tweeting from work about how bored he is. But that is. was in the middle of the match. In the middle of the match. Amazing. Tampa Bay zone. Yeah, we claim him. He lives in Nashville now. <laughs> no, nah, I don't care. We still claim him. Wins the belt. And then a few minutes later, 
he doesn't have the belt after a crazy amount of things occur. I don't understand anything that happened after he won. I know what happened leading up to him, you know, obviously winning that match and right. why he got the belt. So he beat Seth Rollins. So what is your question? What happened? What the hell was with CM Punk and the other dude, Priest? So like, what C- happened after CM the match? Punk, CM Punk was on commentary because, of course, he tore his triceps, so mm-hmm. he wasn't able to wrestle at WrestleMania. So they have this thing called the Money in the Bank briefcase. If you win the match, it's a ladder match. You pull down the briefcase. You have 365 days to cash it in on the champion of your choice at any time, Zach. And you want to take it you know, when they're most vulnerable, so after they got the snot beat out of them. So in this scenario... After Drew McIntyre wins the belt off of Seth Rollins, he's, you know, holding the belt in front of CM Punk's face. Punk trips him up, starts kicking him in the head, and then here comes Damian Priest, cashes in. So it was five minutes, I want to say like 44 seconds, your guy Drew McIntyre was the champ. That's it. That's it? He doesn't get like a rematch or anything? He could. He can bitch and moan about it. But I feel like he got kind of jobbed. I feel yeah. I feel bad no, for that's him. Just the name that's just it. part of it? And it's funny because he did the same thing to Matt Hardy in TNA a couple years ago. So payback's a man. But so it's a thing. Yes, it is. But it wasn't right. the biggest story of the weekend, that's for sure. No. So that match was interesting. Um, I know I thought Bailey winning was nice. Bailey against EO Sky was, was cool. great. Yep. Day one was when the Eagles players came out. Right? Yes, Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. They had came the Luchador mask with Rey Mysterio. It was great. Jason Kelsey jumped over the ropes. He didn't go through the ropes. He jumped over. I'm like, look at this guy. <laughs> so I liked. I, I liked. It that. was cool. That was cool. But let's get to the main event where I was promised an Avengers Endgame style bout Did where just, people were showing up left and right, and I was not denied that. Jay That's Retcher. So great. I was not denied it. I am not gonna lie. I know I can't do it justice. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you. But what a finale. Cody Rhodes finished the story. He's the champ. A lot of times people say, I used to watch wrestling back when it was blank and blank. And it's mm-hmm. usually Stone Cold and The Rock, right? Mm-hmm. You got that. You got Cody Rhodes after losing at WrestleMania 39 last year in the main event against Roman Reigns. They wrestled in night one Saturday. Cody and Seth Rollins, they lose to The Rock and Roman Reigns. So it's a bloodline rules match, which... All that means is that it's a no disqualification, no count out match. Anything goes, and that's exactly what you saw. It looked like Cody was going to beat Roman. Out comes Jim Uso. Jay Uso, his brother, comes down. He spears him off of the long ramp. That was pretty badass. It was better than their match on Saturday. And then Solo Sokoa comes out, hits him with the spike, or hits Cody with the spike, hits a spike with the spear at the same time from Roman Reigns. And right as they're about to pin him, here comes John Cena. He comes down, hits him with the FU, the attitude adjustment. Here comes The Rock. The Rock comes down, hits him with the rock bottom. Seth Rollins comes out with the old shield gear on. And then we think, here comes a whooping. The Rock is about to whoop Cody Rhodes with a special belt that says Mama Rhodes on it. There was going to be blood on the belt, and he was going to give it to Cody's mom. And then what happens, Zach? Doom. The dong hits. The gong, the ultimate thing that stops you in your tracks. The lights go out when the lights come back on. Who's standing behind the rock but the one and only, the Undertaker. Choke slam to the rock. Two minutes later, you get three crossroads. Cody's finisher, one, two, three. Roman Reigns, who's been the champ for over 1,000 days, Zach, finally gets pinned. He gets pinned for the first time since 2019. Cody Rhodes, your WWE champion. He finishes the story. He holds the belt that his dad never held. He hands it to his mama in the middle of the ring. All the baby faces, the good guys are out there, just like when his dad won the NWA championship in 1981. What a great story, and you're you're right. It was like the Avengers. All the big guys had to come back. Rollins, Uso, Cena, Undertaker, to dethrone Thanos, a.k.a. Roman Reigns. One of the best WrestleMania moments, one of the best WrestleManias of all time. Easy. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed those moments. Um, I I think I might want to start following along a little bit more now. This would, They're talking about it's a new era. So obviously a lot of the stuff with Vince McMahon, uh-huh. him getting out of there, that's a huge part of why they're kind of turning the page. And there was a lot of talk over the weekend about this is a new era, the Paul Levesque slash Triple H era where you're seeing a lot of different entertainment. They're getting away from the sports entertainment. It's getting back to wrestling, but you saw Meek Mill there. You saw Lil Wayne there. Jason Kelsey. There was a lot of people in attendance. George Kittle was there. Uh, It was really, really something to behold, and it 
it made you feel like WrestleMania 17 when Austin and The Rock and going back to the first three WrestleManias where you had Muhammad Ali and Liberace and Mr. T and that's what WrestleMania is all about. It's the granddaddy of them all. It's the Super Bowl of pro wrestling and man, Super Bowl, I mean, WrestleMania 40, just an incredible show. So to that point, it, obviously they had some guys from the Attitude Era, but it did feel like a breath of fresh air, like a new era was it starting. Did. I saw a video that wasn't on TV, and it was Paul Heyman hugging Roman Reigns. Yeah. And that hit me hard because we just saw Paul Heyman talking about the entirety of it all up at the Barrett Sports Media Conference in New York. And I saw a, a sentence, and it was in one of the things that I read after it all happened, I think this morning, about how, wait till you see the next story for Roman. That's what Triple H is saying, yes. That's pulling me in. It is. That, it is. The, 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 the night was fantastic. But as a, a casual fan who, who really was a big fan when I was growing up and just got away from it, stopped enjoying it, that's the type of thing where I'm like, okay, I kind of want to watch now. I want to see the start. I want to get on board at the front end. And uh, I, I thought, you know, as a casual fan, giant dub yeah. for the WWE It was night. huge. And it was quick hitting, right? It was quick hitting. It finished before 11 p.m. last night. Listen, bad note about the national championship game. Tonight, the game starts at 920. That's terrible. Finished before 11 both nights. Really quick hitting pace action. Had a little bit of everything. It wasn't too much over the top. Stone, uh, Snoop Dogg being in the ring. I love Snoop being involved because half the time he doesn't know what the hell is <laughs> going on. He's great. He gave the wrong number for the total attendance. <laughs> he just wanted it to end with 420. It was so great. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, where do they go from here? Because, yeah, a.k.a. they finished the story, but now – the new story starts. Like, the story really continues tonight on Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, those two episodes after WrestleMania usually are the best ones of the year. So you can start tonight at 8 o'clock on the USA Network, and you can thank me later. Sounds good. We'll tell you what's on the menu, what you missed on today's show, what we got coming up tomorrow on the program. In the drive with T-Grass at 3 o'clock, we preview his show as well right here on Jay and Zach when we return Drafting a great team leads to a lot of success in football. Well, the same can be said when it comes to your housing needs. My guy, John Howard, howardteamhomeloans.com has the best crew locally. Quarterbacking his squad to a championship caliber level. Let me break down the housing game at howardteamhomeloans.com for you. First down, cash out refinances, credit card, and personal loan debt is awful. A lot of times people call John when it's too late, but don't wait until you're missing credit card payments. Give John and his team a call right now and blitz through your options today. Second down, alternative lending. Self-employed buyers that have been turned down for a traditional mortgage, John and his team have options for them to get a loan without tax returns. If you have been turned down, it makes sense to just call John Howard. Why not? See what happens. Maybe he can help you. Third down, getting pre-approved. Interest rates are coming down finally this summer, which means the market will be nuts. Get pre-approved with a 21-day closing guarantee at HowardTeamHomeLoans.com to stand out in the crowd. Some quick success stories for you. John Howard's playbook recently included one listener saving over $4,000 a month in bad debt by leveraging their equity to get a new roof and lower their insurance. Another first-time home buyer bought a beautiful spot in Newport Ritchie after taking John's advice to use their hard-earned VA loan instead of the conventional loan. John even pays for the VA loan appraisals, y'all. Don't screw up your pick on financial housing needs. Draft John Howard. HowardTeamHomeLoans.com. Make sure you tell him Zach Blobner sent you. You'll get some extra love. The Pat and Aaron Show. The show of the people. Raw and unapologetic. All right, Rays fans, I got my shovel ready. You know I've had it re ready for a long time. I've had it ready for like over a decade. If this measure isn't approved, you might as well bury the shovel. Beat your need for Tampa Bay sports talk. The Pat and Aaron Show. Morning starting at 6 on 95.3 WDAE and AM 620. Streaming live on Alexa and the free iHeartRadio app. Men. Suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? Frustrated taking pills that don't work? Here's a message from Prestige Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prestige Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prestige Men's Medical Center now. 813-538-7931. That's 813-538-7931. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger is a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics regenerative medicine is regenerating me. All natural. 
and that's what I'm about. I'm going to tell everybody why I'm better. Oh, and by the way, it looks like the competitive Satch is back. We're all in the same boat, and I'm getting better, and I'm watching them stay old. Go to QCKinetics.com. Get relief and your game back. Call for your complimentary consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 813-305-3000. That's 813-305-3000. Locations in Bradenton, St. Pete, Lakeland, and Brandon, 813-305-3000. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan. I know being a champion means you're a leader in your field and you always rise above your competition. That's why when summer temperatures get extreme, our home has a champion air conditioning system that keeps my family comfortable and cool. Get peak performance in your home by finding a local champion dealer at championhomecomfort.com. Ask about our special financing options with rates as low as 0% and our factory-backed extended parts and labor warranty. Always leading, never compromising, championhomecomfort.com. Guys, if you or a loved one has been injured in an accident, you got to call my guys over at Catania Catania Injury Law Experts, the top-rated personal injury firm in Tampa. They've been doing this since 1992. You can call them 24-7, 365, and they're proud to say they have successfully recovered over $500 million in counting for injury victims just like you. So give my friends over at Catania Catania a call, 813-222-8545, or online at CataniaCatania.com. Catania Catania, putting families first. Office Tampa non-attorney spokesman. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Opening your home to showings means strangers can open anything. Don't worry about getting around to spring cleaning. Sell your home with a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain Real Estate and skip the cleaning and organizing necessary to sell your home. Hey, it's Aaron Jacobson. Say goodbye to the stress that comes with a traditional home sale. With a guaranteed offer from Mark Spain's Real Estate, you can receive an all-cash offer and close within days. No showings, no open houses, no costly repairs. Mark Spain Real Estate makes selling your home stress-free. Check them out. MarkSpain.com for the guaranteed offer. No obligation. That's Mark Spain dot com and start packing good greek moving in storage your superhero movers Broadcasting live from the Rude Air Conditioning Studios, we are Tampa Bay's home for sports and Pulse Nation for over 20 years and counting. 95.3 WDAE and the mighty AM620. The X Factor. Presented by Hungry Howie's Flavored Crust Pizza. Cincinnati Reds host the Milwaukee Brewers tonight, and Reds left fielder Spencer Steer has been doing it all, hitting three homers, driving in nine, and adding a steal all while getting on base at a 500 clip over the last week. He is tonight's X-Factor. X-Factor brought to you by Hungry Howie's Flavor Crust Pizza. What is on the menu? Everything we have up on jnzack.com. Our interviews with Mark Topkin and Dave Mishkin, blindsquirrelnovel.com. Go check that out. That's Dave Mishkin's uh, new book. Definitely going to check that out. That is for sure. So, yeah, up on jnzack.com, Mark Topkin, Dave Mishkin, and also the latest cookie review from Chris Mathis. What do we got coming up on the show tomorrow, buddy? So tomorrow we take a break from Denard Spann. He's traveling. We'll have him back with us next week. Buster Olney, though, from ESPN will join us at 2.30. We got the mixtape at 1.45 and working on a couple other guests. We'll also have a positive coaching alliance that we're going to shine the spotlight on somebody here in town. Coming up on The Drive with T. Kraz, he's got Brian Anderson of the Rays at 4.05 and Coach Golish at 6.05. Forgot to mention, nice. he threw the first pitch out on Friday and did a good job. Didn't bounce it, I told him. All you had to do is don't bounce. And you did a good job. So I got a chance to talk to him. We interviewed him in the second inning. Really, really great chat with him. So he'll join The Drive with T. Kraz at 6.05. That's what's on the menu presented by Barto Ford. Tired of big city prices? If you're not going to Barto Ford, you're going the wrong way. At Barto Ford, if it's for sale, it's on sale. Don't go the wrong way. Go to BartoFord.com. All right. Good stuff. A big thank you to Dave Mishkin, Mark Topkin, and you. Job well done by John Dugas on the other side of the wall. For Zach Blobner, I'm...